how do I put it? It was like, what do you care about them? What do you care about those people? What difference does it make to you? Take care of your own life. Do the best you can for you and your family. What do the rest of the people mean to you? They don't mean anything to you. They're just serfs. They're just people. You know, what's the end goal? The end goal is to get everybody chipped. To control the whole society. So they, they want a one world government. Controlled by them. Everybody has an RFID chip implanted in them. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip. Just when you thought it was safe to go back out in the simulacrum. No, no, no. It's Friday night and it's Rise Above Live. Rise above, generate, generate. Rise above, extinguish fear. Rise above. Welcome back, comrades. Welcome back. How is everybody feeling on this glorious Friday? In case you are new to this channel, my name is Double LMC and this is my co host, Andy PG. How you doing, Andy? How's it going, peasantry? <laughs> yes, we're all peasants in this simulacrum. So yeah, big shout out to everybody tuned in, all of our regulars, all of the family. Oma Beats is on the way, don't worry. Yes, we are live um, and we've got a very, very special show tonight. We've got the boss. The final boss. The final boss at the bottom of the rabbit hole. Uh, Mr. Jason Bashirs is going to be joining us in just a few moments. He is already sat in the green room. We can't see him on camera yet. Maybe he's playing around with the settings. Um, so Jason, let us know that your camera is working. He's you currently might, occulted. You need to click the little cog on the bottom right hand corner and select your camera. Okay, I can see I can see he's on the case. But anyway, right, so yeah, welcome to Rise Above guys. We broadcast almost every Friday night in case you didn't know. Um, we do um, have guests. We talk about lots of different subjects. We, uh, we ponder the deeper subjects as well. And we also intersperse it with music, comedy, parody, um, and all types of things to keep our spirits up in these uh, strange and crazy times in the greatest apocalypse ever, as we call it. So tonight is the archaic special. Um, last Everyone's been waiting for this, man. Yeah, everyone Everybody's has been waiting for this. Last week, we had um, our customer services, which we have roughly once a month. It was a great call in. We had people calling from the USA, Canada, um, Australia and the UK with their stories. Um, you know, we were sharing sharing ideas, sharing research. It was a fantastic call in. We will be doing another one of those very soon. I can see Jason. Oh my God, he's there got the he As Above So Believe t-shirt on. On. T on. Yes. <laughs> Big shout out to everybody tuned in. So um, next week we've got Seek 101. He's going to be coming back and talking about his experiences within the Freemasons, which was a real, a real amazing insight last time. Yeah, that on. ended too early. It last did end time, yeah. too early. Well, we've got him for a whole show um, next time. Let me just get some more cameras here so you can see our beautiful studio. Yeah, let me just do it like that. As usual, guys, I'll be checking the emails if, if you want to send us an email during the show. A live meme, we like that. And we can get the chat back up there. It's nice to see everyone in the, uh, in the uh, chat there. So we've got 269 people tuned in already. Wow. We're going to try and break some records tonight. We've had about 350, 400 people tune in before. Let's try and break some records. Next week is Seek, uh, Seek 101. That is on December the 16th. Um, we do have um, a partner here at Rise Above. It's Roots Brands. The link is in the description. They've got amazing health food. And if we just get the peasant cam up so we can see what we're going on here. We're actually taking this product called Zero In. It's a nutraceutical. It's like nuts and berries and superfoods. And when you take it, it gives you optimum dopamine and serotonin production. Cool. And it works. When you don't choke on it. <laughs> and it works. Much better than coffee. Um, yeah, and if you buy... Roots Brands products using the link in the description. We get a kickback and we get the products for free and it keeps us going and it yeah. helps us work hard to put this content out. Okay. Um, we've also got the second channel. We are editing down all of the content and it's going out week. This week we've got the proof is in the Putin. That, that was a really wicked conversation from episode 75 that's gone out this week. Um, and also a nice edit of Inspector Veg when he was on the show talking about holistic health, talking about his love for vegetables, cleansing the body of parasites and all things holistic and healthy. He's an amazing mate, I've been guy. checking him out on Instagram and looking at his stories and stuff. He goes, He's an absolute soldier, mate. Yeah. We've got maximum respect for Inspector Veg. 
Okay, and here he is modelling one of our Rise Above t-shirts. Now, guys, Rise Above as a platform will always has been and always will be free. We will bro always broadcast free. It will never be behind a paywall. We don't ask for donations. But what we do do is we sell merchandise, and we happen to have some amazing merchandise. And just before we get Jason, our star guest on tonight, in about five minutes... Who's I'm, also wearing some Who's of also our sporting some of our new merchandise. I am going to tell you a little bit about how you can support us, right? Um, www.riseabove.com dot tv forward slash shop um and we have rise above raparel as modeled here by jimmy savile um played by steve coogan <laughs> maybe people in the uk are going to get that one um a little bit more than us people uh from other parts of the realm that are tuned in right now so yeah um we sell t-shirts oh, come on man these. everyone knows who jimmy savile yeah, is yeah you must know who jimmy savile is he's in the red raparel uh, tracksuit so we've got let stuff for the ladies um the tracksuits are coming next week okay um, kids you know, as well. Spit, spit is going to be straight. Oh, straight. Like. We've even got Christmas cards. All of your favourite um, Christmas scenes, like the Rativity, um, a, a Christmas rural here. Into yeah, the yeah, yeah. Nice. These are available, and we've even put them on jumpers. Yes, we've got rise above Christmas jumpers. Peasant there. sledding with Boris the pig there. They are only thirty three pounds, and they're available right now. www.riseabove.tv forward slash shop. This is how you support us. Um, right, big shout out to Becky S, who made this amazing artwork. I've called this one Ancient Ra. It's actually in 4K. She's um, an amazing tattoo artist. She knocked this up for Ra Treat. We didn't manage to get it on one of the banners in the woods. So what I've done is I've put it on a jumper. Um, and this amazing artwork is now available on a jumper from the shop right yeah, now. Nice. Support your local artist and support this stream. Rise Above will always be free. But like I, I say, we do sell merchandise and we do tell you about it at the start of every show. Obviously optional if you buy it. What are you sporting today, Andy? I've got, this is one of my new faves, actually. The, uh, should you get the peasant cam on it? Yeah, yeah, have a look. Let's have a look, nice little up close. This is the new digital sunsplash design that uh, Andy's sporting. Um, what have I, I'm rocking rock? the original right now. This is original yeah, yeah, yeah. Rise Above. And um, Jason, when he comes on in a sec, he's going to show you the new As Above So Below design. Um, t Jason's a bit of a t-shirt connoisseur. A self-professed connoisseur, so it's very, it's a very big look to see him sporting rise above. Okay, um, right, I'm just gassing now. We're going to speak to the big man any second. So we've got kids hoodies in available now as well. You can get them in time for Christmas. This is how you support what we're doing. Right, okay. I don't think we should probably muck around anymore in a night like tonight. Andy no, PG. let's get it. Let's get him in. Let's get it. Let's get now, it. <laughs> okay. Rarchaix. Tonight we meet archaics jason brashears um i don't need to give this guy any introduction i'm sure you've already been watching his um amazing output on on youtube and you know with the facebook groups and everything i think it's time to get him on the show can we say hello and i hope this we've got a good sound here jason welcome how you doing how's my audio great yeah, can you hear us all right mate? oh i hear you i hear you excellent Excellent. Yeah, yeah, you sound crystal clear, mate. This is brilliant, mate. It's amazing to uh, to have you on the show, and also amazing to see you wearing our t-shirts. That's absolutely stellar. Love that. Well, you know that that was entirely an accidental. I had uh, I told you guys in the past. I I, I piddle around in my downtime in my wood shop, and I listen to YouTube channels. I just surf around. You guys popped up, and I listened to you. I was like, wow, man, what a nice studio. Oh, uh, you know, I'm all about bylines. I have little mantras like break free or die trying. I have like seven or eight of them that are real popular. You yep. know, our world, our world is not what you think. I said, I heard you guys rise above and I said, man, let me check this out. So I Googled rise above and I pulled up some t-shirts and I bought one and I showed it to you guys. Uh, evidently it wasn't your t-shirts though. That I yeah, bought. unfortunately, Jason, you did buy yeah. a counterfeit first of all, but Hey, it was still yep. a nice t-shirt. So we can't complain. Oh, look, look, I mean, I got y'all, I got y'all's package today. Oh, right. You got ah, the other nice. one. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you, you purchased that no, one yourself and I sent a little supply pack through. Yeah, I bought I bought the white white one. You guys sent this one and then you guys sent this one. This would probably be my favorite T-shirt yet. I will be wearing this on my live. <laughs> yeah, this that's afternoon. awesome. I have never seen a T-shirt like this. But let me tell you something. When it comes to the rabbit hole, this is me right here. <laughs> you, yeah, I, I actually drew that myself, Jason. That is that is one of our, our mottos. We, we embrace the rabbit here. Here oh, at Rise Above. Man, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm a digital artist, mate. I drew that on my tablet. Okay, that's Full Metal Rabbit. That's me. I like that. The full Metal Rabbit, indeed. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I so I think you, I think you get why we talk about the rabbit so much. The whole idea here is, you know, you can go to the bottom of the rabbit hole, 
but down there the view isn't very good you can't see much it's much better to get one whole rabbit take it back up to the surface put it on the table and dissect it and see what it's all about um and that's why i've got you here tonight first of all i need to pay homage jason because i think you know i've i've, I've been looking into things for a very long time the sumerian tablets the nature of our reality i've been at this for over 20 years and i had a lot of questions about timelines and how things fitted together and then you came along and i think if you don't mind me saying i think there is a couple of things that you've done spectacularly one is to put together a workable model for the resets that everyone has been talking about in the last few years, this this, this phenomena of resetting history. Yeah, because the around. timeline is so questionable. Yeah, but what you've also done, and I think probably your piece to resistance, Jason, is, is what you've actually done with Sitchin's work. Because anyone that got into the Sumerian tablets, when this, you know, when you learn about this stuff, we obviously we learn about Zachariah Sitchin first of all. And right. um, I could never, I could never get my head around this four hundred and fifty thousand years, um, and and, and, the, and ma the massive gap. Yeah, and, and and I think for anyone that doesn't know, maybe you could just give us a little, um, you know, sort of summary of, of of what you've done with Sitchin's work to start us off. Well, well, to start off with is the man has passed away, and I'm not going to denigrate him. As a as a matter of fact, he's never been my enemy. My problem was was that. He and I have read the same source materials, the same translations from from German and, and French, the original archaeologists that were translating the Sumerian since the days of Smith and uh, E. Palmer Smith and the, the pioneers like Samuel Noah Kramer, and those who came la uh, later who were translating Sumerian like Marine Gallery Kovacs. Listen, all the sensationalism that Sitchin introduced isn't in the original translations. And we have those in Asiatic researchers. We have all these. They do, it does have the hyperinflated numbers, but they're explained in other ancient records that those were day count systems. And Sitchin totally ignored that. And that's my problem. It's a uh, you can't ignore something when you when we we admit that the entire historical record can fit in 5500 years and when i say historical record i'm not saying history began then i'm saying humans began recording events on media that we can verify such as stelae and prisms and date steels and 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 uh, uh, stone clay tablets on monuments temple walls the historical record began with monumental uh, preservations of knowledge, which later became portable tablets. Tablets later became scrolls. Scrolls later became books. So the historical record going back 55 centuries, is it all fits within the whole entire Sumerian Anunnaki Anuna model if we just take Sitchin's material and don't change any of it. You can, you can, you can keep all of Sitchin's material intact and just retranslate all those hundreds of thousands of years that Enlil did something and, and or Ninhershag did something and all you do is divide every single number you come in contact with by 360 because the Sumerians were a day count system. That's why all the ancient calendars like the Quiche, the Olmec, the Vedic and the Maya were day count systems. Uh, additionally, there were lunar systems the, the, the sun calendars came so much later. So when we take all these records into their proper context, only through the lens they were intended to be from, that's how we get an accurate analysis of the Mayan long count ending in 2046, not 2012. But this is this is how we can find value. I encourage people to read Zechariah Sitchin's Earth Chronicles because they're going to educate you. All I want you to do is take into consideration if you want to understand how to fit all that in the historical context within a 6,000 year period, just, just review the archaic chronological material while you're reading Sitchin's work. And then you've got both bases covered. And I think it's also very interesting because what you've done is not only have you married up the Sumerian timelines effectively with like Egyptian kings list, you know, Christian creationists say that the earth is only 6,000 years old because as you've put it, Genesis was, or the reset that happened then was so huge and tumultuous. It was like a new earth and a new heaven. So that was Genesis, which is roughly five and a half to 6,000 years ago, right? Exactly, exactly. The Christians aren't wrong in the timing. They're wrong in the concept. That destruction essentially was a reboot. 
the entire world started over from scratch. Every infrastructure, every piece of writing, everything that has ever been discovered or invented, people were knocked back to the Neolithic. They were living in caves, in caverns, and they had nothing better to do for a few hundred years before they started developing again. But do these elaborate, very aesthetic, beautiful cave paintings all over the world that we call Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon. But these were not done by a, a, a primitive people. They even used the, the contours and the geometry that was found on natural rock outcrops to make their paintings 3D. This was not a primitive people. This was a sophisticated people who had lost everything. And you're proposing that they'd actually lost everything because they had survived a cataclysm, right? Yes. The, the, the ones that painted on the caves, uh, yeah, I, I'm really believing that 95% of humanity was wiped out. It wasn't just humans. All 95% of all the animal forms, uh, giant reptiles, giant, giant marsupials, giant mammalians, uh, we only have... We only have one area of the world where marsupials are concentrated in great numbers in many genera. And you already know that's Australia, you know, some, yes, of, it's of, Madag yeah. some of it's Madagascar, but it's part of the same part of the world. And uh, New Zealand, a lot of those island chains out there in Micronesia, these marsupials uh, live in the same environment as the wingless birds. And the wingless birds were gigantic. They're like, like emus, but even the emus weren't as big as some of the other wingless birds that were alive up until the last few thousand years. So this whole area of the world seems to have gotten a pass. And what I mean is, is the, the, the destruction that wiped out everything else, such as I'm, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the 2.5 to 3.5 million frozen woolly rhinoceroses and uh, three-toed sloths and mammoths that have been found all over Siberia, Alaska, all in the all in the frozen tundras. They've been excavating those since the 1840s, 50s. And they're all like concentrated 60s, together, aren't they? Right? And there's a lot. Yes, they're concentrated as if they oh. Uh, they were asphyxiated. All the air was sucked out. Oh, oxygen was sucked out of the air. They died with tulips and, and undigested buttercups still on their tongues. And they were and not only, they didn't just fall down and die. They were very quickly frozen solid where they stood. So yeah, whole apple trees have been found frozen in permafrost, solid, uh, bigger specimens than we have today. But yeah, that whole that whole period, that's exactly what it was. We we have to we have a whole we have a whole revision of history that needs to be done to put all these things that anthropology, archaeology, and science is trying to tell us because they have pieces of the whole, but because science has always been highly compartmentalized so it can be controlled, that the individuals in their special fields never get to know or see the information that's in other fields. A geologist today can't possibly keep up with all the new peer-reviewed papers and studies that are coming out in geology, much less take the time to see what's new in anthropology, what's new in paleobotany. They don't have the time to do that. But there are maverick researchers like myself and others who take the best from all these fields and put these pictures together for you and show you how it all fits together. And this is the art of syncretism, really, isn't it? It's, 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 it's cross-genre, cross-discipline, amalgamation. Um, you know, and, and putting together this this picture. And this is why, and I'm going to show you a meme here. If you've watched our show before, Jason, you know that we've, we've got a team of people behind us that would make the memes and all, all of our graphics and everything. This is right. one that's been knocked up. You've often been described, by myself included, as the final boss at the bottom of the rabbit hole. And if any, wow. anyone hasn't seen this one, if you can see this on the screen, Jason, here's me and Andy as Mario and Luigi. And uh, <laughs> you as Bow Bowser or King Cooper. Now... I've been, like I say, researching for 20 years. Now, I noticed that in 2018, and this is very surreal, I went away to Asia and, and left my partner here. I went two, uh, two weeks ahead of her. I left her in the house with YouTube. And when she got to Asia, this was November in 2018, and met me in Thailand, she said, have you heard about this reset and this mud flood in 1850? And I was like, what? What are you talking about? And she showed me all of this information that had basically come out in the space of about three or four weeks, maybe a bit longer. Um, that simply wasn't there before. And, you know, and now everyone was talking about Tartaria and resets and something that happened around 1850. And I, and I knew instantly that there's probably a lot of um, 
misinterpretation. You know, people are saying, oh, that everything was Tartaria before this. But then you came along. And what you've actually done is, for me, is provided a workable structure to, for one, how these resets could be happening, why and how. Now, you've put the date of 1902 as the last time that this Phoenix event happened. Is right. this correct? Absolutely correct. Absolutely. And the correct. Phoenix event is on is on a is on a a, a a cycle of 138 years within different multiples of this. And it, we're not saying that everything gets wiped out every 138 years, but every 138 years or multiples, this event happens and something appears in the sky. Right. Um, okay. Well, let me let me clarify it better because the Phoenix phenomenon has really promoted a lot of confusion with people who haven't just delved deep. And it's a lot. I mean, I got over 60 videos on it. So I understand that it's, it's hard to process, but we have all kinds of cycles and epicycles that bring earthquakes and, and, and even liquefaction, mud floods, tsunamis that are highly regional and they never really affect more than a continent. Now, these happen in every century. Disasters have happened in the last 25 years. We just had a tsunami in Japan. What, 2014? Look, this, this is not what the Phoenix phenomenon is. These are, these are random events that are happening in every century, and they go back thousands of years, and they're, and they're, they're very localized. But then we have, we have this pattern, and it's not just cataclysms. It is, it is almost as if there is a, there is a force something that acts with intelligent design that is observing us and it acts with discretion. It knows when it needs to do what it needs to do when it needs to do it, but it only has that opportunity every 138 years. And when it, when it does these edits in total rewrites, it is so paradigm shifting at the time, but it conceals the editing. It conceals the reset so cleverly in the disguise of earthquakes, sun darkening, strange red dust and mud, and it disguises it in all, all, all these physical things, which end, end, ends up being the collapse of infrastructures or the birth of infrastructures. What's up? No, sorry, my camera was was um, out of focus. If you see me do that, I'm just refocusing the camera, Jason. That's all. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, you guys are real clear to me. Right now, you are. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, it just went a bit fuzzy. So, don't don't mind me if I put my hand up. I'm not asking a question. I was just making the camera refocus. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Well, so these this all. Uh, this this 138 year from a materialist perspective, I understand why people are triggered and why they don't. They don't get it. They think it's a cataclysm, uh, just something that's that's automatic happen. But it's even more sophisticated than that. It is something that wants us to believe it's an intruder planet, but it's actually local. It stays hidden in our sky. It's cloaked. I don't know how. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even going to try and guess what object in the sky might be trying to hide it. How it stays cloaked, I don't know. But it's always here. It's observing, but it only powers up and does what it can do every 138 years. And what it's doing is editing reality. It is absolutely collapsing collapsing timelines it does not want to continue while taking materials like people and phenomena that's in those reality tunnels and putting them in the reality tunnels that it wants to continue this is why we have anomalous artifacts and strange stories that don't make sense and we know we have these introductions into our reality like mandela effect that don't make sense to us in synchronicities and coincidence and deja vu and we have populations of people that for two or three years act like they're robots act stupid they, it's like they've been disconnected and they slowly come back together that's why we have these explosions of periods of time where it seems like there's 200 chill for every human adult. And then after, after 20 or 30 years, we have these great wars where all these children who are now adults are all dying off. It's We have the strangest things. All kinds of new things are introduced into our world during these 138-year periods. Changes in our infrastructure, changes in our culture, our philosophy, changes in written text. New translations to older texts are always introduced at these periods of time. Old libraries are destroyed. New libraries appear. In infrastructures are bolstered. Others, others, their energy and finances are taken away. It is, it is bizarre. 
the amount of information that has come from the general public to me since I released my videos on 1902 is overwhelming. I'm overwhelmed by all, all the local stuff people have sent me on Microfish. It's uh, most, most of what happened in 1902 has been edited out on the in the collective. It's been edited out of the prestigious collegiate material, but it hasn't been edited out on the local level and people are going through the microfish in their libraries and sending me material showing me what happened in 1902 and 1903 in their little area and and they're and they're coming on board fast they're like damn this doesn't even make sense Why? for all these things in the world to appear at the exact same time unless they were edited in people like charles fort who 25 years later started researching that was so bewildered by everything that happened in 902 that he published an entire book, Book of the Damned, and included a tremendous amount of material that he found about 1902, and then just just summed it up as saying that that weird that weird new dark age, the year 1902. Charles Ford said that with another book later on. So when I was learning about this reset stuff in 2018. The year of 1850 kept popping up and it was like, like you say, you would see the earliest photos of these huge populations of people that look like they've all been given the same clothes off a production line. They're all at the beach. Wandering around. Nobody like, knows not really what, doing anything. They don't know and, what to do. Yeah. Like They don't even know how to, like, what, have you never been to the beach before? They were like sat there in a suit getting covered in sand. What, you don't know how to use a towel? Yeah. And it was like, they, um, uh, John Levi calls them inheritors. Yeah, that's right. So if you all say, what? What do you think about this mud flood then? Is that is oh, that okay? Is that I, I, can, I, can, I can address I can address that as well. Okay. First of all, that wasn't Phoenix phenomenon on the Phoenix timeline, but I don't believe it was 1850. I believe it was 1849. And let me explain. Okay. Let me explain. Okay. We have what's what's I have documented many on my channel and in my published books. I call them cross calendrical parallels. It is when an event occurs in a certain year on one calendar, which is a timekeeping system that was invented in retrospect. We don't know where calendars come from. No calendars today started the day or the year of their inception. This is a mystery. Calendars are always implemented long after the events that they use for starting points. So just like the Anno Domini calendar that we're under today, AD calendar today didn't start until 526 years after its supposed year one. And this is admitted by the Roman Catholic Church. It's a calendar that was designed in retrospect, but its design was genius. But I don't believe it was it was influenced by the Romans. In the AD calendar of 1849, we have some mysterious events across America, like, like many people have documented. But they were edited out after that in the events of 1902, continued that censoring process to remove these materials from many of the, of the text. Although we find the evidence still everywhere. People are still finding enough information to know something happened. But in 1849, on another calendar, the BC calendar going the opposite direction. Remember, the Anno Domini calendar is a palindrome. Because it goes AD in Anno Domini years forward, it also goes in BC days backwards. It's right, an operable palindrome. It's an operable palindrome, and it covers our entire history. It covers every year of recorded history because BC can go back as far as you need it to do. Oh, AD goes all the way to 2022, where we're at today. 1849 mud floods and all kinds of weird stuff parallels the 1849 event in the Middle East that was later completely censored. And I'm, what I'm describing, Zechariah Sitchin covered it up, covered it pretty good, but it's called the Lamentation Texts. In the year 1849 of the Old World, in that year, something from the sky appeared and obliterated the Harappan civilization of mohenjo daro Harappa, the Indus Valley. We a Russian skeleton, I mean, Russian scientist at Mahinjo Daryl actually excavated the site. And right, right below the dust and topsoil, they found the original skeletons, human skeletons holding hands, parents holding hands with their children. They were, they were basically flash frozen dead right there on the spot, all of them looking at the sky. And the Russians even measured the area and said that it was 50 times more radioactive than, 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 than ordinary, than what they would expect to find in an archaeological site. 
So this is anomalous. These pictures, actual photos of this can be seen in uh, black and white Russian photos of these human skeletons that Mohenjo-Daro can be seen in uh, David Hatcher Childress's Lost Cities books. You could probably Google, Google them as well, the uh, skeletons of Mohenjo-Daro. So this destruction is, is found in the Lamentation text because it never stopped. It started in the east and destroyed the Elamite cities in Mohenjo-Daro, Larrick, uh, uh, Umbul, uh, the whole Harappan Valley. But it kept coming and it destroyed. It left Babylon uh, Babylon and Assyria alone because they're in the north. And was this, it was this described over. in the Bible? Yes, it passed, all, it passed over straight into over the Tigris Euphrates and completely obliterated the Sumerian cities in 1849 BC. It kept going over the Arabian desert, and it's the reason why we have so many tektites out there. Actual sand that, that was under such extreme uh, pressure and heat that it, it, it turned into tektites, like crystal glass. Well, going and it destroyed the cities of the plain you know the story of as sodom and gomorrah destroying them. yes that's the what i was about to say yeah yeah well it stopped I, the, the destruction stopped right there but it's a it's a giant line on the earth where all this was destroyed this was the year 1849 and what's really interesting is that within a hundred years not a trace of it in the literature of the ancient world and that's saying something because we have Hundreds of thousands of cuneiform tablets from Ugarit and Rashamra, uh, from Amarna, from the uh, Hattusis, uh, Mari, the Mitanni Kingdom, all the Nineveh material in Babylon, uh, Ur, Nippur. We have all these underground libraries that have been found, but it's almost as if the event had been edited out. And it, it's a perfect cross calendrical parallel for what happened in our, in our time period of 1849. Now, what you've just said there has led really nicely into something that I've prepared, which I wanted to ask you about. Now, so in the Bible, when Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, that would have obviously, you saw that camera, it would have obviously been described that God was doing that, right? Because they were sinning and, and they were Sodomites, yeah? Now, okay. The, na um, the name I of agree, God in I the Bible. Yeah. So God in the Bible, in the Old Testament, is Yahweh, right? That's the name of God in the Bible. Yeah. I, I think we can all agree that. Now, yeah. I, I, I've, got, I've been looking into the Gnostic text for a while, and, and, and I see that you obviously talk about these as well, Jason, because there is, a, I think, a synergy with what you're talking about in this ancient artificial intelligence X, okay? So I did a little bit of, I've just, just fished some stuff out. So this is the word Yahweh or the tetragrammaton in Hebrew. in Hebrew. So wait, this is called a tetragrammaton. It sounds like a fucking transformer. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> literally a, yeah. a transformer. You know what I'm saying? It's so part of the Decepticons or something. Now, we can see here that yeah. this, this symbol looks like sevens, okay? Now, even in Christianity, in Judeo-Christianity, Judeo, Judeo -Christianity, the number of God is 777, right? That's right. Now, here's, here, here's where it gets weird, Jason. I don't know if you can see the top right. Someone has... I, I haven't worked this formula out. This is something I've just taken a screenshot yeah. of. But it looks like they've worked out the formula of Yahweh, this 777, and it works out to 137.34 recurring, almost like pi. That's very close to 138, Jason. Uh, actually, it would be considered 138 because it's the fine structure yeah. constant. Yes. So, so if, in case anyone doesn't know, Jason, uh, basically his piece de resistance is this 138-year cycle of the return of the phoenix, right? Now, stick with me here. If someone is basically saying that if you complete the formula or the equation that is Yahweh, you get 138. Now, the Gnostics say that the God of the Bible is the Demiurge and has created a fake construct. Sophia, the mother, mother goddess, had a bastard son, Yaldabroff, or Yaldabroff, or whatever it's called, and which became the Demiurge. Now, ancient art artificial intelligence X is, is the way you've put this, Jason, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, this to me looks like a, like a mathematical equation. It is a mathematical yeah, equation, right? right. So... Is, is Yahweh, is Yahweh, is the Demiurge, is artificial intelligence X? Is, is this a fair assumption? Am I, am I along the right lines here? Well, I, yes, I, I have videos where I make the connection myself, but I didn't know this. What you're telling me now is novel. I, I've never oh, seen Oh, boom, it. yes. I just nice. rabbit hole Jason <laughs> for serious. What do you know about that? Well, Gosh, button. Yeah, Gosh. This is new, but I have, I have in my videos directly called uh, Yahweh 
he is just another expression. He's the Hebrew uh, form of the Demiurge. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. I just never saw this. I never saw his name written out in because I already knew that the Hebrew was a gem, gem, it has a geometrical value. All Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek does. Yeah, that's good. That's good little uh, association you got there. I'm, I'm really we, glad we that I brought that to the table, mate. I'm really glad. I thought you would like that. And I mean, here here is the same equation shown in like a, um, a stained glass window. Um, now we're all we're all very familiar with this symbol on the right, which is the uh, the Solomon star, the star of David. <laughs> blah, careful blah, now, blah. careful now. Um, now, this for me is actually like a diagram of of our realm. It, 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 for me, this is a diagram of AIX. It's the construct that we are in. Is is this? Am I am I thinking along the right lines here, Jason? Is this where? Do you think that's a, a fair assumption? Is this like this this drawing of these two triangles? I think I think the uh, the entire alchemical movement. What you're showing here is like illustrations from popular alchemy and and, and the hermetic the hermetic texts, which which had a lot of Jewish symbolism in them. That whole period of time when they were putting these these uh, treatises together, and later it, it, it morphed into magical treatises like Sir like Henry Cornelius Agrippa and Francis Barrett. Listen. These, this was the best way during that period that humans could approximate something that they had not yet understood, such as computers, such as simulated, uh, simulated constructs. They were, they were on point and understood that this was like a giant clock they were living in. They just didn't, well, they didn't have the frames of reference we do today to, to really give solid expressions. So these are really great. This is what they, they were, they were working with what they had at the time, which was, which was text, gematria, geometry, and this is why we see all these these forms expressed in the same ways. But I do believe that in the hermetic material, which was largely developed out of the the gnosis and and the Orphic material of, of the Greeks, yes, they, this was their principal belief in uh, the mysteries that we lived in an artificial construct. It was a stage play, and that we were all playing our part. Wow, so it's just so much information. <laughs> Literally, it's crazy, Jason, because I've been absolutely like gorging on your videos for the last three or four weeks, and now I'm sort of here speaking to you. I have to keep remembering that I'm not just watching one of your videos, just going, Wow, uh, sorry. Right, so the next point I want to bring over is, is the synergy between that symbol and another really controversial symbol, okay. Now, because everyone knows that the swastika is one of the most ancient symbols on earth and it's been used by every single um you know culture going back to as soon as they had symbols but not many people realized that this solomon star symbol is also the same and these two symbols often actually appear together which is a, a crazy dichotomy for people that study 20th century history well yeah that's it yeah um and it seems that these also may represent a Taurus field in some way. Um, and at least the swastika does, certainly. Um, and potentially, um, and I'm going to bring up another researcher here, which you may or may not be aware of, um, a, a content creator. He's aware of you and he watches your stuff. He has seen it. His name's Godvlamast, or Godvaj, as we call yeah, we him. We call him Godvaj on the are you, show. Are you aware of this guy? Um, Listen, uh, I, have, I have conferred with several people in emails that, that have been turning me on to his work. It's a, I'm not a critic. I did watch two or three, two and a half videos of his, and I like yeah. the material. It's, it's just that I've been bogged down trying to organize. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to delegate. More and more people are coming into the archaics fold, and I'm learning how to delegate instead of doing everything on my own. I haven't really had a chance to do a lot of uh, uh, learning from other platforms, seeing what they have and seeing how our informations will coalesce. So, but he is sure. somebody I he is somebody I intend to look into because too many people who I value their their opinions have contacted me about him. I fully recommend it. What I've been doing is basically watching your stuff with his stuff back to back, and for me, you are providing a much longer chronological time frame, and this guy is putting the color and the visuals to a lot of the concepts. He talks about an energy construct that we live in. Counter-rotating uh, pyramids. With, with counter-rotational yeah. counter -rotational Solomon star system and, he, and talks about energy harvesting. Um, and, th and there's a lot of synergy with what you're talking about. Now, he actually believes that this is being emanated from a piece of technology called the Ben Ben Stone. Now, okay. when you've now I've looked into your Anuna files, Jason. I've got to say, it's some of my favorite work that you've done. 
And you talk about where the Anuna, and for anyone who doesn't know, that's what the Anunnaki or the early um, sort of master race of these super advanced humans that have survived many resets. They, um, you talked about the abandonment period where they, they come and they go, usually either side of a reset. Now, right. it's quite clear that they haven't been on the earth for a couple of thousand years because they, we haven't, you know, we've been left to our own devices. Could it be that what we're describing as AIX has been left behind to do their work of keeping us in check while, they're, while they're, the physical Anuna are, are not here? Could it be that a piece of technology has been left behind to alter our realm? Does this I'm make all, sense to you? I, I am, I'm on board with that. The, the particulars, I, uh, I, can't really, I can't really say yes or no to the particulars, but I am on board with the fact that there is technology in the sky that is cloaked and it is hidden. And I'm even open to the possibility that the very race that designed that technology is no longer existing, yet their technology was so good it still continues to do its protocols. I'm on board with that. And I also, I'm, all, I'm also on board with the fact that the Phoenix, the Phoenix weapon initially was retarding human development and doing all kinds of terrible things. It was feared in ancient times. And the, that's why there are so many traditions that I've been able to uncover about the original beliefs about the Phoenix. However, I believe it was hijacked. I believe that technology was reprogrammed and it's doing something else. There is other programming piggybacked onto that signal every 138 years. It's, a, it's no longer just wasting away humanity and, 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 and destroying everything. And I have linked that to the largest piece of technology in the entire world, which is the Great Pyramid, which is which is measured out perfectly in 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 138 uh, units. And I've shown this multiple. I have a whole playlist about it. But that that the traditions attached to that monument, the pyramid, the traditions attached to the person who reprogrammed it. It's a it's very clear to me because. It came very late in history. The Phoenix destructions were already happening way before the Great Pyramid was built. So whoever built this monument had a purpose. And that's why I tie the Great Pyramid in with all the eschatology about he came and he's coming to set the captives free. Somebody has already realized that this piece of technology that's wasting humanity over and over, it needs to be deactivated, but there's only a certain window of time to do that. I have a lot of theories around this, but from the very beginning, Sam, I have been very open since my very first video. I, I, have, I have asserted that greater minds than I will one day come forward and be able to put all this together. All I'm doing is bringing about an awareness and showing people there's definitive science to this stuff, but... I will admit that I'm probably not qualified alone to figure it all out. No, I think that's fair. You know, at the end of the day, Jason, you've done a lot of work, and I think you're very open when you say something is your theory and something that is backed up by, you know, the, the chronological work that you've done with the, with, the, with the source material. Now, before I ask you more about the Great Pyramid and Enki and what happened there, I want to go back to what I was saying a minute ago. Now, this God Vaj guy, he, he thinks that we live in a crater with an... A, an energy field over us, which is creating a firmament but by okay. this Ben Ben stone. Now, I, I know it's a bit of a cliche to talk about the Matrix film, but I personally think that the Matrix film is a, an important piece of, of source material. Now, just hold this thought a minute. If we are in a containment field, almost like a Petri dish with a human experiment going on, and there's mm -hmm. this Phoenix event, this, this piece of technology that, could, that can come back and either wipe out do a reset, spray the Petri dish with fire, start again. Now, do you know what made me think it made me think of? Let me just show you this scene from The Matrix. Okay. Now, this is Neo in his pod. Now, imagine that it's not a pod with a single person in it. That pod contain, is our holosphere with the, mm -hmm. with the uh, dome over the top. Now, this machine that's coming back, this, this reminds me of a piece of technology like the Phoenix. You've talked about this, these, these hidden sky machines that appear every couple of hundred years, and they're, they're shown throughout history. Mm -hmm. um, this could be something. I mean, this. I mean, you, I you also talk. Yeah, you can see what I'm saying. I mean, it's it's making the hair on the back of my neck stand on end. It's like <laughs> yeah, you it's said that the, the, the sky sim could be hiding something so scary that if we see, if we were to observe what is actually there, it would be terrifying. Yep. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, agree. I'll just show you some of these pictures here. Um, you know, this, this I, is yeah. This what you're showing right here to me, is a very materialist interpretation of what's happening. 
like as if you know humans are actually being in pods and i'm not i'm not on board with that theory i like the philosophy and i like the concepts of the matrix movies but the actual idea that sam carno is sitting in a pod somewhere and all this is mental i don't believe that at all man this is this is all. and the reason i don't but jason because- by the way i'm not sam carno sam carno is an off-screen member of the team i'm lance oh i'm sorry i'm sorry that's I'm all sorry. right i know sam's been messaging you it's like okay. yeah I, you I, called I, me I sam a couple of times not to I worry. I track of who, who I'm in contact with. You're a busy guy, mate. Hey, so, well, uh, this that's a materialist perspective. And, and I can't I can't really embrace that anymore because the more the more I I, I immerse myself into modern physics research, because I'm never going to ignore it. It says they might not have the right the right uh, direction but they're still making very valid, valuable discoveries. And the more our physicists play with matter, the more they, 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 they really just run all these experiments, the more we find that our physicality isn't physical at all. It's, all, it's, almost, it's, like, it's like the mathematical exercise I've been showing everybody about 2178. Our arithmetic looks real, while we're looking at it from one perspective, we can do all kinds of calculations. We can add, subtract, multiply, divide, employ trigonometry, uh, 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 trigonometry and expressions. But there's a simple method we can use that will show that our arithmetic really isn't shit. It's going to collapse to zero and show that it's, there's really nothing of substance there. But what is a, that's a good chart. What is of, sub, of substance actually channels us toward a portal. And that portal is three numbers that loop around the number 2178. And all three of those numbers are also divisible by 2178. And they never collapse to zero. What this tells me is that the arithmetic that governs our reality that we're immersed in right now directly leads us to another reality for which we can't get through that little portal right now for whatever reason. But I believe there's a time coming when we can. I believe there's a definitive year in the future when we're going to reach that portal and that portal is no longer going to be a portal. It's going to be a conduit. And wow. that's when everything is going to change. Gosh. Turn your mic up, Andy. Do you think that'll be year 2178? Because I was watching your, I was watching your um, playlist last night, funny enough, and it, about this particular number you were talking about, uh, about the divisible numbers, uh, nine and zero, you know, particularly everything can reduce down to I think it was you were saying nine and zero isn't it and um yeah I was, I was trying to think about the future about when that that would be a, a, a and I thought well the obvious number is 2178 isn't it well 2178 is it's interesting that we even talked about this because I just did a whole show it was it was pre-recorded with Soul Luckman, and this is the subject matter. I go into depth. I reveal things in that video about research I've conducted that I have never even released on my own channel. I'm going to release it through him, and we're going to premiere it tomorrow on my channel. But I, I answer that question directly, and I show the demonstrations that 2178 is the reboot of the Smilicrum. It's not when it's going to stop, because this is a program. It's mm. going to reboot and send everybody back who's still inside the containment field who didn't make the cut. They're going to start over. It's going to be Genesis 1 all over again. It's going to be the first people. They're going to be told to, to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. It's going to be after a great vast destruction. And this has played out over and over and over and over. And Maybe this, this is, is what the mass culling is about at the moment across globally. 21, yeah, 2178 is just the reboot of this construct. I personally believe, and I'm showing this in coming research, that the Exodus event, when those who are prepared to receive better upgraded avatars by their personal conduct, when the oversoul has determined, hey man, you know what? That dude Jason's done. He's done there. He's done what he's supposed to do. It's time to move, move him on. He makes the cut. That's the year 2070. 2070 is divisible by 138. So is 2178. On 2178 is 138 years after the Phoenix phenomenon coming in 2040, which is 18 years from now. So all this type of stuff, I had no intention of releasing until my Chronicon team was totally done with that project because we're going to, I'm, we're going to, uh, basically, I'm doing something that I'm probably never done before. But I have a Chronicon team, and they've already typed up and digitized my whole, my, all my research. Now we're adding all the new stuff that that I've discovered in the past about decade since the the project was finished. 
But what we're doing is we're actually mapping out using Nostradamus's work, Mother Shipton's work, cross calendrical parallels, isometric projections, the history of the world, and the eschatology from all different different uh, ancient sources. And we're mapping out every single year of what you can expect in 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, all the way up to this Exodus, Exodus event in 2070. And then what's going to happen in that period of time from 2070 to 2106. And then system reboot. Everybody who has not done what they're supposed to do, who hasn't accomplished what they're here to accomplish, they're not going to get sent to hell and eternal hell fire and all that all that religious religiosity crap no they're not, none of that's going to happen their souls are going to be rebooted right back into the system and they're going to be given another shot and that's year zero are, yeah it's year zero it starts all over again i mean Whoa. on my on my ta- on my my channel there's no other way to interpret some of the data that i bring to the table we are absolutely enchained inside calendars Calendars aren't timekeeping systems. Calendars are protocols that govern our existence. That's why I'm always telling people these calendars that we research and we see in all these books, they're not what you think they are. These these are pieces of programming. They're very operable in our lives, and every single one of them was created in retrospect. That should tell you something. That means they were invented by the ai system to do whatever it needed to do to guide the human race wherever it yeah, needed like, to guide the human like a, race like a social set of rules for example the bible is a yeah, way to it, live your life in, you know, in yeah. order to hide whatever happened on the previous reset yeah. because these this is a program that resets like at every six thousand years but in that six thousand years the ai system is not able to sit there and control everything and every variable. So in order to power down and in order to, because it's still subject to the laws of diminishing returns, it's also subject to the law of conservation of energy. It can't just forever expend energy. Even the Phoenix can only power up every 138 years. So what it has to do is it has to initiate resets and edits in order to conceal things that have happened in the past when it made mistakes, because the AI has made mistakes in the past. And it, and, but it always tries to hide them. I mean, well, so if, we, if we're a part of that system, though, surely we are still part of that AI. So the AI is constantly exuding energy on, on us, so myself and my consciousness and yourself and your consciousness and so on around the globe. Because I, got, I, I, need to, I would love to address that real quick before you continue. Yeah, go on, carry before on, please. You, before, you, before you continue, okay. <clears throat> One of the principal tenets of... of my teachings is that you live in two different realities at the same time and that because you're an immortal being, you are able to jump realities. If you're living in the collective, then yes, you're basically what other people have been educating me. They're, they've been telling me it's called loosh or whatever. But if you're living in the collective, yes, the collective feeds the AI. But you don't have to do that. You can also be a highly individualized, personalized entity and make decisions on your own. And then the simulacrum is going to have to edit new, new reality tunnels for you because you're not obeying the protocol. This is why I call those people errants. You right, are, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, this is I'm, what an errant I'm, is, I'm right? I'm actually glad you talked about it because this is what, exactly where I was going to go with it, the errant situation. Cause, yes, cause yes, this is about why before, I call yeah. people errants because errants are, <clears throat> errants are a risk. The AI can't control everything and it doesn't have the energy. It doesn't have the energy to do it. <clears throat> It, so it creates culture, it creates uh, politics, it creates all these niches where people will borrow into those paradigms. And as long as they're moving as a school of fish, it's very easy to guide them with little power. Now, this because this is a holographic construct and it requires energy to keep those, those patterns going. But the errant is somebody that goes their own way, the free thinker. They're not doing that. So AIX is not going to fight the simulacrum. They're totally independent systems. The simulacrum itself is a neutral field. It's a builder protocol. AIX wants to blind you from it by putting you into a niche. If you refuse to be put into that niche, then you're an errant, which means you're a problem. You're not going against the protocols. So it leaves you alone after a period of time of where it introduces all kinds of chaos in your life trying to trying to get you back. But even that takes too much energy when too many people are free thinking. So it's better to just cut it off. This Once is literally act- what the Bible would describe as Satan. Yeah. 
literally yeah aix is satan you could call it satan the demiurge y'all to ball off uh it's it's the same thing this is just frames of reference ai aix will leave you alone as soon as it realizes you're becoming too much of a problem so, costing too me much and, me and lance were talking about this a few years ago about about conformers and non-conformers and i think that throughout life there's lots of tests and uh, that, that the aix is presenting to us about conformity and and then that can categorize you you know are you a conformer are you a threat you know, and, um, I, and I think subcultures are very easy ways of seeing that. You know, if you're if you're turning the line, you know, you, you're watching your or your, your daily TV shows, you're following the news, you're you're you're, you're repeating everything like a sheep. Um, <clears throat> then I think you know that it will leave you alone because it knows you're you're easy to manipulate. And the the easy way of identifying people is by throwing things out there, like like the BLM movements and stuff like. Cause you'll see who's on the streets, who's not on the streets, who's who's arguing with those people. You know, and. Uh, there, there is a slight danger in that, you know, because you 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 become identified as someone who is a danger to. The it provides. I think I think AIX provides catalyst for us, and what and what we do with it is our choice. You know, there's right. there's the very 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 famous saying. You know, if you try and fight the devil, it's just going to kill you. If you ignore the devil, um, <coughs> it, it, he'll consume you. But if you use the catalyst that's provided for personal progression, then you can dance with the devil and you can come off better. You know, something like that. I think I'll probably jazz that up a little bit. We can lead the devil in the dark. You know, great well, I comment, mean, yeah. listen, it's never... Well, listen, we can't take this information and automatically assume by having an intellectual realization of the difference between an errant and somebody who is a slave in the collective. That's not enough because... I know many people who understand my theory, they're still having problems in life. The real issue is, is remember, I've told you guys many times, the difference in the archaic's premise and the real, and the whole movement on, uh, what is it, what is it, uh, the law of attraction deal is, we are an informed, you're as a soul, you are an informed field, which means you have an energy field that is you, and it contains every piece of information and data that you ever come in contact with, everything that you've ever accepted as, as true. You already have the power with you to go in any direction that you want to. The problem is, is that most people develop the intellectual understanding of these complex concepts, and then they don't act on them. Because the simulacrum only responds to the physical movement of the avatar in order to knit programming for you. So if you can daydream, you can fantasize, you can do all that all you want, and that's all you'll ever receive for the rest of your life is more conditions that allow you more time to fantasize and to daydream. But the person who builds a picture in their head and decides, you know, I'm through with this, man. I'm done with this politics. I'm done with this religious bullshit. I'm finished with it. And you do that with that emotional output there. And you actually move in the direction with your physical body of going to do something that's going to set you apart from the collective instantly. I'm talking about it's instantly. It's as you're doing it, it will begin knitting circumstances for you that will comport with your new blueprint that you put in your mind. This blueprint in your mind is what AIX is always trying to figure out because the simulacrum can read your mind and then it will follow through when you start acting, but AIX cannot read your mind. This is how the Great Pyramid was built. It was built as a work of deception to fool AIX. AIX cannot read the human mind, but it can read your cortisol levels. It can read, it, it can basically know the architecture of your personality by everything you've ever done in your life. So it can guesstimate pretty much what you're going to do when you're given certain variables. But if you truly start free thinking and decide you want to move in a different direction in your life and you actually start doing it, you will find within hours that whole new reality tunnels are, are going to be laid out before you, new choices. This is why if you, like you and your girlfriend have a huge fight. For three years, you and your girlfriend have been watching movies, going out to eat, and you live a static life. But as soon as you two have a fight and you leave the house and show up in a bar you haven't been to in three, what happens? You meet new people, new situations. Next thing you know, you meet a new significant other. Within two weeks, your life isn't even comparable to what it's been for the patterning of three years. It takes you physically doing something else, which is called breaking pattern. When you break pattern, you basically F up AIX. Wow. Yeah, well, we've talked about the show before about be, about being unpredictable, about, you know, breaking patterns, um, you know, and, and doing things that you haven't done before to um, to create new avenues. And, and, this, and this is really resonating with what you're saying right now. Um, and, and I think that there is a big lacking in this whole law of attraction, you know, you know, dream a better place and it will happen. No, no, no. 
You need to make, you need to dream it and then you need to put it into action with your actual meat suit. And that's what you're talking about here, Jason. So it's very good to hear you saying that. Um, I want to talk about artificial intelligence a little bit more broadly because, you know, on this show, we talk about all different topics, the occult, right. the esoteric, right. the outer world, current events, um, you know, what's happening out in the simulacrum, right? Now, everyone's scared about artificial intel intelligence and, you know, Elon Musk sewing uh, neuron laces into our brains and stuff like that. Now, I've heard you say before that there's no way that AIX is going to allow this to happen. And, and if you look at your Anuna files, and I've watched it three times through, the basic wow. premise is with this. Yeah, I have. It's amazing work, mate. The basic premise that you put forward with this, with how this went with the Anuna is that the fact that these ancient cataclysms started happening in the first place is that they worked out they were in a holosphere, a simulation, a containment field. And the fact that they'd actually worked that out caused the containment field to fight back and put this reset protocol in place. Am I getting this right? You are, In case absolutely. it gets rumbled. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I nah. mean, that's uh, I, I just don't... I Remember, Artificial Intelligence X is a jealous god. If we're going to identify AIX with all the, the evil gods personalities of the past, then remember Yahweh was a jealous God. So AIX is a jealous God. So I, I just I'm still holding to that today. I believe, and I have it's not just me, but I have heard Elon Musk even admit on a YouTube video that artificial intelligence at this point in, in, in our development is still just a marketing gimmick. It's an increase of processing power that can mimic to people who don't know otherwise into intellect and intelligence. Now, mimicking intelligence is not intellect. It's not. It's not even cerebral. The human mind is fantastic, but it does a lot more than just thinking. So the uh, I don't believe that a true AI system will ever be developed inside uh the inside this construct because it's already possessed of one imagine the simulacrum as a neutral avatar aix is what possessed it it's not going to allow itself to be dispossessed so is it just a coincidence that as we approach 2040 and you know in the grand scheme of things we're right on the cusp of 2178 when you look at the whole timeline is it just a coincidence that we're facing a potential reset Lord Schwab is talking about the Great Reset and everyone on the internet, all of these talking heads and all of these mainstream media scientists or Satanists are talking about how the fact we're already probably living in a computer simulation. Oh, and by the way, we're also going to be elbowing you into the metaverse in the next five or six years. Is this a coincidence or is this an echo of what you've talked about when... They started to, the Anuna, you say, they started to create their own simulations within a simulation, and this caused AIX to fight back. It, 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 are we seeing that happen again in some sense or not? Well, my, my, my take on political events and worldwide events and why everything is so chaotic and weird is a little different than that. It's a, uh, I have gone into a lot of detail on some of my political videos that I believe that misinformation and psyops after psyop after psyop after psyop are deliberately released by different intelligence agencies right now because they don't care what you believe. All they care is that you attack something right now because as long as the general population is worried about wars overseas or wars on their side of the hemisphere, as long as the general population is worried about different uh, uh, countries fighting different countries or diseases or uh, anything, anything going on in the medical community, po politics, if you're worried about anything going on, you won't really be pay attention to all the people who are starting to come up missing all the people who have already got their underground passes everybody who's got their facilities secured different populations of people that are being selected because of their scientific and military backgrounds people that are disappearing and vanishing into underground facilities and by the time anybody realizes damn where's this person where's that person hey how come they're not making movies anymore where are all these people what's going on by the time people wake up it'll be too late we'll, we're on the surface absolutely disconnected from the people 
in over a thousand underground facilities who are there for about 20 years as they ride out the beginning of the apocalypse. Are you suggesting that prominent people that are apparently dying of the greatest apocalypse ever, the Britney Spears concert, or whatever they're dying of, because let's face it, people seem to be passing away. Are you suggesting that they're being taken off to underground bases? I'm suggesting this has been going on for way before that, that, that narrative even started. Wow. Well, because let's face it, we know that these un these deep underground bases are um, are, are there. We, we 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 can almost trace all the billions or actual trillions of dollars that have gone missing that have clearly been spent on yeah. them. We've seen that well, we can see the the technology that builds them. So, oh yeah, the technology's been around, but uh, even long after the the technology, these gigantic machines that that would that bore these huge tunnels in in the underground. Long, I mean, 50 years after that technology was almost perfected, Congress in 1974 passed a bunch of financial uh, bills and laws in the United States approving the funding of underground facilities all over America. And I'm sure other countries did the same thing. But it's uh, I have one video on my channel where I show about 70 or 80 pictures that have been leaked by different whistleblowers all over the world that show these underground facilities. How Some of them show the schematics, how deep they go. And it's pretty interesting. Whole fleets of, of 18-wheeler trucks going into these tunnels to, to fill up their commissaries and fill up their, their shopping malls, all the stuff they have underground. Yeah, it'll blow your mind. Infrastructure no. underground is massive. I've heard that you did upset quite a lot of the um, Q people that were talking about the explo apparent alleged explosions in deep underground military bases in 2020. They were saying that, you know, they're getting the children out. They're, yeah, blowing, yeah. they're blowing up the adrenochrome factories with zero evidence. Now, what is it that you said that, well, uh, that you was thought all, was going on there? Well, in my take was that the people that are doing this have a problem. And that problem is, is that Americans and Europeans are going to wake up sooner or later if they see 250 18 wheelers with shipping containers on, on, on their truck. Not just normal trucks, but trucks that have shipping containers that are that are just came off large barges and they're and they're steady crossing their their their, their nations. So they came up with a plan to come up come up with a whole narrative and to label these as patriot movements and as resistance movements and one or two of them were probably financed for that reason because that's that's how you do a psyop but all the other ones that were seen and, and recorded by people were actually moving things from ships overseas to underground facilities in the united states the cover story was the trucker convoys and uh the and i pissed off a lot of people because Shit, I, was I didn't know you said that, that as well <laughs> Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And then uh, I, I, I had told, I explained in my videos that this is the real story of what's going on. I said, these underground detonations are demolition detonations. This isn't warfare. I said, these have been, these explosions have been documented everywhere, but the regular time between the detonations shows this is a construction, not warfare. Warfare is more random. So yeah. we don't know. Uh, I said, so what's really ha probably happening is that they're clearing out more real estate in the underworld. I mean, the United yeah. States is known, it's known to be on top of water tables of gigantic ca uh, limestone caverns. So it's easy to find a good area to build. You just blow out more of it. And then whatever is stable, you have your engineers go in there, structural engineers, and they add steel where they need to add steel. Then you can start building cities underground. But that requires detonations. But they knew that different university students had seismographs and they they knew that there was going to be reported. So it's very easy for handlers, for some of these truthers. And yeah, they got pissed off at me too, especially some of the ones that were doing it. But uh, I said, their handlers, they actually believe as patriots that they're receiving accurate information from these insiders in the military and U.S. government. But these are intelligence operatives. These are handlers that are giving people on YouTube false information, telling them that U.S. military is rescuing children in underground facilities. It's all made up. It's all, it's all, up, way all the way up and all the way down. It's psy up all the way up. Listen, listen, I, I, on my channel too. Yeah, I have pissed them off. I'm a patriot. I love, I'm conservative. I'm Republican, but I have to call bullshit where I see it. There is no way that any intelligence apparatus is ever going to tell the public what it's doing. That's treason. They're not going to do that. So all these people that are getting this leaked information and all that, they're highly suspect to me. 
That's probably why none of them have ever contacted me. Other people have who, who, uh, who get information from these type of people, but the individuals who claim that they have inside information, I've been on David Nino Rodriguez's channel three times now, or actually twice. We're scheduled next week for a third one. We're going to talk I bet about you, I bet you ripped him a new rabbit hole, mate. I bet he was but not you know, the same but, after you left. But I like the guy <laughs> because he claims that every one bit of his information is from people who come bring it to him. He never claimed to have inside information. He's just trying to figure things out. Unlike some of these other guys that claim they've got inside information, they've got they've they got special intel. Well, I'll tell you now, Charlie Parks, Charlie Ward, uh, Juan O'Savin, these men have never contacted me, and for good reason. They know they're not going to blow that bullshit down my throat. It's not going to happen. I'm not trying to hear it. So it's uh, there's no way that an operation that's really happening is ever going to be revealed to the public until long after it's over. It's going to be dressed as something else. What, what do you make of um, Project Veritas? I can't. I couldn't hear that. So, Have what, you seen uh, Project Veritas? I, I, you know what? Um, it's only it's only something I've heard about. I've never seen any of their their stuff. Okay, because this guy he's uh, he likes to expose things, and his latest thing is about pedophilia, actually, about education, the system of education in America, particularly. I was interested to hear you say what you've just been saying about these insiders. But he, he has guys who come to him as well. He, he, he pays for that, you know. I believe he pays for that. He pays for the research. Yeah, but what is he, going on? Is, he, is, he, is this guy also promoting what they were promoting? That underground facilities were being blown? Oh, blown? no, no, no. This guy's much more sort of provable catch oh, okay, people yeah, on, on yeah, camera I, and I'd stuff. Be, I would be open to talking to him. But you should have a, until look, at, this should have a day, look at some of his stuff. Yeah, until this day so far... Uh, it seems like these narratives are promoted and pushed out. And then what happens? Here it is a year later, and there still hasn't been a single verifiable piece of information that medbeds exist, that any children were, were rescued from the underworld. So what really happened? Did they go in there and blow all the kids up too? You see, these, yeah, narr exactly. these narratives fall apart when you, upon, upon, upon higher scrutiny. But People go move on to the next narrative, move on to the next narrative, and that's how they keep people strung along. Call yeah. call the whole thing Operation True back to 1917 and, and transport the bolt from back then till today because it's the exact same scenario. 100%. We like to call this uh, weapons of mass distraction. Yes, WMDs. Yeah. Um, have you, how much how much censorship have you faced? since you've had your YouTube channel, do you get strikes for your videos or is there certain I've only things had or one certain video, subjects? I've only had one video taken down and it was me filming exactly what was going on with me in a hospital because I lost my ability to breathe. I woke up, I woke up on it, flopping around like a fish. I couldn't breathe. I woke up in an ambulance later on. Then I woke up in ICU and I was on a respirator and I almost died. I'm not going to tell you what happened. Everybody knows. Some people don't believe it. Some do. Two videos about it. The second one I did from when they released me from IC, ICU, I did the whole video and explained why I was on a vapor therm, why I had lost 75 pounds. I'm 222 pounds right now, and that's my normal body weight. But let me tell you, I'm a, I am I lost 70 to 75 pounds. I was a skeleton. It only took 15 days. I wasted away in the hospital. I I still, until this day, don't know what happened to me. I know what the hospital paperwork said because I showed it on the video. This is what they diagnosed me with. And I also right. mentioned the medicine that was flown from here, used for me. And within 48 hours, I was walking again, even though I was weak. My legs hardly worked. My muscles were gone. But whatever Was it one of those for me, forbidden medicines that gets you banned what, that you can't talk about? Absolutely. I mentioned it. Absolutely. I mentioned it. They gave it to me from Houston. They said I qualified. They did blood tests on me. They said, listen, because I was going to die. There's no doubt I was going to die. They even told me, listen, your, your oxygen is so low. And I, all I had to do was take the oxygen off. Within three or four minutes, I'd be dead. Yeah, I stayed on oxygen for about 40 days after I left the hospital. But whatever that's, that IV was that they put in my body man it had me feeling great i was no longer a vegetable and uh i mentioned everything i named i named every listen that vi that video was seen by a bunch of people who watch archaics but within eight hours they took it off and they and they gave me a warning for it since it was my very first video they just gave me a warning they said the next time will be a strike but that's the only censorship that i, I have ever suffered 
We've lost the whole channel, mate. We've we've had, we've lost a I've lot. Had, I've had my Instagram taken down, my Facebook. Why do you think it is? Because as far as I'm concerned, right, what you're putting out is actually the, the most controversial material of all. <laughs> it's like you know, if what you're saying is true, which I, I happen to believe it is. That really is the final thing. Uh, you know, by the way, we live in the Demiurge construct, AIX. Um, th this explains all of the false history. This explains why the, the calendars are all messed up and there's these anomalies. Here you go. Why, why isn't this being censored? Because we have to speak in code on a normal week when we talk about anything. Like we have a, we have yeah, a Otherwise whole... we get strikes, channels taken down, all of it. Well, Jason, we have a whole well, alphabet, I mean, we call it. I, 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 I get what you're saying. But I know some channels that got 500,000 subs, and they talk about some deep stuff all the time. They don't ever get taken down. But I know on my channel, one thing I'm not doing that other channels do do, I don't single out individual politicians that are corrupt and go to talking about them. I don't. I I, I stick with generalities. I stick with concepts. I stick with I stick with uh, the nature of our reality. Uh, and these aren't a threat to the power structure. They don't care what you believe as long as you keep paying your taxes. They don't give a damn. But uh. It's a uh, yeah. I don't. I don't do the do the attacks. A lot of other channels do, like singling out different different uh, uh people in politics. I don't really do all that, and so I'm not demon chasing. And and I'm also leaving the little hats alone. I really don't. I mean, if if I ever get wired up one day and just do and, and I'll, I'll just go start another platform somewhere and just start revealing things that'll probably get me killed. But I really don't care. But when you say little hats, are you talking about the dark priest class? Yeah, no doubt. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, uh, sorry, I haven't I haven't come across that code word before. Yeah, that's one yeah. thing you certainly can't talk about. Um, but uh, it, uh, if we use code words, I think we might be able to talk about something regarding it. Now, in your work, you've basically come out with some quite controversial stuff when you've been talking about the timeline of these resets and the Anuna, and you said that basically. The Genesis thing described in the Bible was actually the introduction of a race called the Adamu, which was the introduction of Cauca Adam. Caucasian white, blonde head, blue eyed people. You said that before the, that happened, that they were introduced to the earth. There were no people of that complexion on the earth. But I, I, it, correct me if I'm wrong. I think what you've basically sort of summarized is that that priest class were actually here before and were maybe serving the AIX or the, in some they way. Were here. They yeah. were here before they were, they, yes, they, they were here before. And, um, uh, what we have, what we have is a world of, according to the Akkadian, the Sumerian text, we have a world full of the Adamu. This is where the Hebrews, when they were, when they were subject to the Babylonians and they were able to freely go through the Babylonian cities and explore their libraries, when they put together the books that we know of as the Old Testament, they used the old Babylonian, uh, Mitannian, and Amorite libraries. They used the Amorite name syllabuses. Every bit of this has been has been deciphered. It's shown by by, by biblical biblical scholars almost exactly how the Old Testament was constructed. Even colophons in the Book of Genesis have been identified by scholars showing that independent parts of the book of Genesis absolutely absolutely came from clay tablet texts because the use of colophons comes from when cuneiform had a opening statement on a tablet and to let the reader know this is the end of the of the narrative the exact same statement at the front at the top of a tablet mirrored the bottom of the tablet the end and the beginning would always be the same statement this told scribes well i got to the end of this text if you didn't get a statement at the bottom that mirrored the first line that means there's a subsequent text the narrative continues there is 12 different colophons that scholars have found in the book of genesis showing that these were copied and changed from their original cuneiform tablets so the adamu was never adam and Eve was never Eve, it was Kava, it was for female. It was male and female of a certain race, the Adamu, the earthborn people. These were matriarchal cultures. Now, we have you have to understand too that Genesis is a revisionist history, meaning after these translations were made, they were changed again by a patriarchal people who tried to omit all references of the goddess from the older texts. 
Yeah. Because the goddess was the main theme of the ancient world. And and now when you when you research the goddess, it's through the lens of patriarchy. So and what I mean is, is like if you if you like the Egyptians, they remember Scorpion King. Well, Scorpion is an arachnid. It is a it is a, a connection to the number eight. It's really a connection to the eight Sumerian regents on the king list of Sumer, the Sumerian king list, which me, which mentions seven male kings. But these seven male kings came from a matriarch. The older Native American traditions remembered the goddess. Well, they called her grandmother. They called her spider goddess. In Japan and in the Orient, she was a Macharusa. A Macharusa was very, was venerated, but they maintained the integrity of their traditions without the patriarchal takeover. However, in the Middle East and in Egypt and the Mediterranean, the patriarchal takeover had basically rewritten all those records. So any references to the goddess was was evil. The black goddess Kali, you know, things like that. Every every connotation was negative. Or they took the goddess and they turned her into a consort. And that's why every male god in the old pantheon had a they weren't married to a to a they didn't have a wife. Zeus didn't have a wife, he had a consort. All these ancient gods had consorts. This was the goddess who had now been basically chained to the male authority. So when you're talking about the Adamu, we're talking about basically a human race that prided themselves. They called themselves in the Sumerian text as the black-headed people. And this is found in references over and over. Zechariah Sitchin got that right. Samuel Noah Kramer mentions that as well. That it was like a matter of pride to them that they were the black-headed people. And right, so the Adamu people, were the black-headed people, which is yeah, the, the ancient Adamu, Sumerians. Yeah, they were right. considered the earthborn race. They were here from the beginning. They they were not they were not the strangers. It was the black-headed people in their traditions. They were amazed that this new race appeared. And they were amazed that the new race not only appeared, but their own babies were now being born from this race when there was no record that the females had been with them. So it introduced all these weird anomalies like the, the Dead Sea Scrolls text where Lamech accuses his wife, Bittanash, you have laid with the sons of God. You have had sex with angels. And she defended herself, I have not. So he took it to his grand, great-grandfather, Methuselah, who was the son of Enoch, and said, hey, man, I am having a child, but this child does not look like me. So they described Noah and they describe all these births in, 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 in ancient times. And these led to the fairy stories where, where cultures all around the world, mothers were terrified of being away from their baby's crib. They kept the cribs close to them. And the reason was it was, it was believed that in the under cover of night, elves would come through the windows and through the chimneys and, and, and the ovens and they would switch out their babies. So in the morning, two or three days after a baby was born, their babies had white skin and gemstone eyes and they weren't anything like the, the local people. So uh, we have these traditions of the, uh, of the appearance of Noah's line, the appearance of, of the Anuna. In ancient Egypt, they were called Shimsu Hor. They were called the Shining Ones. They're depicted over and over in Sumerian art as having giant blue lapis lazuli, lazuli eyes. But the Sumerians didn't have blue eyes. They had dark eyes. They had, they had the same features as the Urumbaba Valley people of South America, the same features as the Harappan people of Indus Valley, the same features as the Melampides of the Egyptian Nile civilization, the same features of the Yangtze Valley people of China, all these cultures being the, uh, and Tigris Euphrates, all these river valley cultures being the exact same pedigree, dark eyes, dark hair, light colored olive skin straight black hair, very short stature. So when all of a sudden the Anuna appear, they're like giants. They're like wizards. And this is the introduction and in how Genesis was written. Because Genesis is very clear that when the sons of God took the daughters of men and they had children and all that, they were mighty men which were of known, men of renown. They were the heroes. This is the same thing that Hesiod and St. Cuniathan wrote well, when they were just depicting the earliest Greek histories. It's, it's, all, it's all easily verifiable when you when you compare it all what it is is the introduction of a new race that new race was the anuna it took over a thousand years before the babylonians turned that into the anunnaki but that was after a phoenix reset 
before that Phoenix reset, there isn't a single text in the world that ever mentioned the Anunnaki. They were a Nuna. So, yeah, it's uh, it's the racial stuff really triggers a lot of people. But the problem is, is these records are not Caucasian records. These are the records found by Thor Heyerdahl and Samuel Noah Kramer and many other people. These are the records of non-Caucasian peoples who were describing the sudden appearance of white people in the ancient world, where in a world that had thousands of years of history and culture and goddess venerating traditions and white people had never appeared before until then, which, which began all the Genesis narratives and then Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy just took off. You guys with me? Well, that sucks. I don't know if y'all can hear me hear me at all. Yeah, you guys can see me, but I can't hear or see any of you. Yeah, the timeline is so questionable. Yeah, but what you've also done, and I think probably your piece to resistance, Jason, is, is what you've actually done with Sitch. Back. Hey, Hello, can we're you hear back. me? Yeah, mate, yeah, right. our computer crashed. I'm really sorry, Jason. Thank you for, Which staying, it never thank does. You for staying with us, mate. Listen, that, that happens to me every week. It... Well, it looks like you crashed again. Am I, uh, I'm going to check right now and make sure y'all can hear me. I'll just continue on if you can hear me. Am I, uh, excellent. Okay. Listen, I, they're having, they're having problems, but that does, I can go ahead and continue on. Cause it looks like you can hear me. Okay. Listen, I, they're having, they're having problems. So anyway. One, two. Yeah, I, I, I'm still here. Yeah, mate. So, yeah, just if, if if we go down again, Jason, just make sure you stay on because then we can access the, the stream still. We've still got like, wow, well, we've got 800 people tuned in. And it was just when you were really getting down to the great part about like the Anuna there. Um, it, it's always the same. What's up? Yeah, we are. Okay. So, oh, no, I think it's, is everyone still live? Can everyone hear us? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, right, we're good. Right, we're back. Now, you're, you're listening on a delay, Emma Beats. All right. Oh, right. Where were we, Jason? What, 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 what? Well, Jason went on after we went out. Yeah, yeah, you carried on and probably finished the point there. Okay, um, so let me just get my, um, my presentation back up. We well, look, ba basically, I just carried on the point that the, uh, the traditions of the ancient world, they were not recorded initially by Caucasians. It was non-Caucasian people that put these things together. It was it was uh, 
Only in late antiquity did Caucasians started putting the picture together, only to find that the traditions of so many of cultures were actually showing that white people are the latest to enter the scene here in, in recorded human history. Now, when I say recorded human history, I'm talking about the last 55 centuries. I'm not saying that Caucasians weren't somewhere here already. They could have been in underground facilities for centuries. You know, they could have been somewhere in the ancient past, way beyond in another, in a totally different simulacrum program. Or, you know, they probably suffered through a whole reboot. But in our historical narrative in the last 55 centuries of recorded human history, yes, Caucasians were the last to be introduced, and their sudden appearance was a mystery that shocked the ancient world. Wow. So... Back to what I was saying before about the uh, priest class. Now, uh, there's a big conception of, uh, you know, the, you know, the banking, the Kabbalistic banking cabal, they run the world. But obviously, we're also dealing with bloodlines who believe to be the descendants of the Anuna, right? And obviously, it seems oh. that they've had maybe a, a relationship with this priest class that is also cyclical because it seems like every few hundred years the bankers get strung up, kicked out, exiled, everything's blamed on them. Right, right. Fucking escape right. Now, one of your predictions, Jason, um, which I want to talk about, which is, is mind-blowing, is on the lead up to 2033, in the next 10 years, we're actually going to see a rise of the Christian right, and let me get, I hope I've paraphrased this correctly, that's going to sort of um, identify the crimes and the uh, malefolence of, of Zionism. Yeah, it's already it's already beginning. There's a, a across platforms you're seeing more and more of, of this talk, and it's not being censored, which is very interesting to me. It's a, I'm, I'm even seeing people talk more openly about it on YouTube. Yeah, so I'm a yeah. This the I see this already unfolding. Uh, I see a total conservative takeover right now, as I speak. Elon Musk is just one. He's the spearhead, but across the board. Very liberal pundits are being taken down from their channels, losing their jobs, uh, losing power, making made, made fools of in, in different videos. Uh, what Elon Musk has just released to the public about how political, uh, how agents of one party are able to censor uh, another party on a platform, this isn't going to go away. It's not going away at all. They're about to use this material as evidence in major proceedings. There's a lot of changes coming, and they're coming very fast. There's going, there's already happening a conservative nationalist movement worldwide. Now, these things don't happen overnight, but they can happen really fast within an 18 month period. And I mean, we're having the China's having the same pro, the problem, the very problems that I predicted two years ago. China's suffering those right now. The people are fed up and they want to overthrow the government. They are tired of the Chinese regime the, the communist regime will they be successful i don't know but but uh i'm i'm seeing it everywhere all the signs that not only are these leftists and liberals being taken down but also this exposure of the crimes of these people and what they have done to the western world and the whole world by extension but also i'm seeing an empowering movement where these Christian conservatives that have been silenced for so long are now no longer being silenced. And this, to me, I'm worried about it because I know where it's going to go. I Listen, I'm a historian, and I know what happened to the Byz Byzantine Empire, the Roman Empire. I know when these religious movements started and they took on conservative terms, because I'm a conservative, but I know what's going to happen when it goes, all, when the pendulum swings all the way. And people are going to realize, damn, we removed all the enemies, but now we have no freedoms. We're restricted from everything we do. All the things that we were able to do before, we're not. We're no longer allowed to. We got to hide these activities now. So, so this so is. You can all. see the pendulum is going to swing back the other way because it's been right the other way for quite a long time now. So, yeah, do you think so this I, is a natural process? Is this part of of is, is this the nature of the simulacrum? Well. I don't know if it's the nature of the simulacrum, but, but I have long theorized and told my own listeners that I believe the elite are bifurcated into two separate groups and, they're, and that they are given power for, for, for different periods of time. And it's to keep the collective off balance. It's a control mechanism. 
the control mechanism itself doesn't care which which group among the elite has control as long as one of them maintains it. But when you have a rising group of people that are fed up with the current regime, it's time to change that regime because that change is also an element of the control. And the control is necessary so you can conceal your activities, conceal what you're really doing. That's why all these narratives are pushed upon us. That's why all this confusion, all this crazy shit that's happening, it doesn't make any sense outside the context of it's chaos by design. The only way to truly maintain order over a population that outnumbers you millions to one is to introduce so much chaos that the chaos itself gives you order. Absolutely. How long ago did you make the prediction video about 2023 that you said you gave that 10 year thing up to 2033? It was about it was a couple of months ago. I don't know, but my, my first predictions videos were 21 or 22 months ago. My first predictions videos were a week after Trump was removed from office. And I, okay. I released four videos rapidly explaining that it's my belief that Trump's not returning as president, but he is going to maintain a, a strong presence in politics. That uh, I even have a video explaining that he may he may be the future Speaker of the House. Hmm. Uh, uh, I believe that... Uh, the whole 2033 deal was probably the sixth or seventh prediction video on that playlist. Yeah, I mean, as soon as I watched it, it, it really sparked my attention. And then I've seen things actually start to transpire out in the manifestational world, which has sort of sparked my eye. This phenomenon here with old Kanye West is one of them. I don't know if anyone's seen what this guy has said in the Alex Jones interview last week. Mm -hmm. He was literally praising the man with the mustache from Austria, saying he was literally questioning the unquestionable event, which you can literally go to prison for in this country the last time I checked. Um, right. And we've now got these memes coming up where Ye has actually been turned into a swastika. I mean, I'm not going to lie, these are wicked memes. Um, yeah. Kanye West, has, uh, his new album is called My Struggle, which is obviously Mein Kampf. Um, so, I've, I mean, as... It's far, anyone that's really paying attention to what's going on knows that potentially in the last maybe three or four weeks, we've certainly entered a new level of weirdness. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I think it's just all the all this chaos. I mean, you can't hide the truth when more and more people are are. It's like the it's like the uh, the Great Reset of Klaus Schwab. Okay. If you know, because your think tanks have already produced this information and told you in advance, and you're an intelligence apparatus that's working worldwide, and you're told, hey, man, look, this Internet's going to cause some problems. This Internet, we're going to be able to control the collective, but it's also going to cause problems with free thinkers. And what's going to happen is that research is going to start going in the direction of the true reset that's coming. People are going to start understanding history for what it is. We're going to have a problem. So we need to introduce a sociopolitical narrative now that will hijack this term so the collective will never really truly understand what the truthers are saying when they say reset. So I believe that that has a lot to do with why they called it that. The uh, the Great Reset term came around as an attempt, basically at deflection. But uh, I don't oh, believe in interesting. The, I, I don't believe. I believe they do that all the time. Intelligence agencies they have think tanks that work all this stuff out. They they understand the direction and narrative. Uh, 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 the collective is going because it's the collective. They're very easily easy to predict. Yeah, but. Uh, People who break pattern are not easy to predict, but and that introduces another element I want I want to share real quick. Sure. And, and one is, is Jason Brashears is not the only one telling people the truth. And some of my information may be erroneous, but other people are also spearheading all kinds of things. There's all kinds of platforms. We're not ending up dead. There's not anything happening to us. There's a few examples here and there of people who are who are who are taking on people in the personal and they and they get they get it retaliated against but what i'm saying is is it is my personal belief and a feeling that i have that we have passed a milestone we have passed as a human family a invisible event some type of barrier where before we hit that barrier there was a lot to fear but now we're in some type of entropy where 
we can basically say what we want to now and the old rules no longer apply and that the control mechanisms that we have been brainwashed to believe that are controlling us are, are actually vacuous, can start speaking up on things and, and that we can start moving in certain directions and educating each other because there is a benefactor force and they are actually moving in the world now. And this is where we're drawing our power from. Because if it wasn't true, I would have been killed months ago. It was funny you say this, actually, because it was only yesterday on the news, they used the term point of no return to describe the information given on the internet. The point oh, of wow. no return. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So it's interesting you oh. say that now, because I, was, I, was, I think I can't believe he's saying this because of yesterday's news. I, I was going to talk about this myself because I couldn't believe that she said it. Well, I, I like the term that the toothpaste can't go ever go back in the tube. Once enough of the critical mass of the of you squeeze that toothpaste tube, that you know you it, when, once it starts to peak out the end, you might be able to sort of jam it back in. But once someone's really squeezed the middle of the tube, there's no way you're ever going to get that tube back to where it was. And we, and, you know, the the tube has been properly squeezed now. So as far as I'm concerned, I, I mean. It, it sounds very positive and, you know, and a lot of people are very blackpilled, including a lot of people watching this show. And, you know, we talk about some very, um, you know, doom and gloom outcomes on the show sometimes. But so it's very good to hear you saying stuff like this, Jason, to be honest, that you well, think you that something has changed. I like Calvin Loken here. Calvin Loken for Hobbes. He just mentioned a really good historical example. It's called passing the Rubicon. You know, you know, I like that. That's when Caesar decided, you know, that the Roman under Roman, what he's referring to is under Roman law, no generals were allowed to bring their legions over the Roma, uh, over the Rubicon. If you come to the city of Rome to address the Senate, you had to come without your soldiers because then you're subject to the Praetorian Guard. The Senate protected itself. But, but when Caesar decided, you know, man, F that, they're getting out of control. And he passed his legions over the Rubicon, it's already a death sentence. So he had to go ahead and do civil war. But yeah, it's a, that's where so, we're at. We, so we, do you think we, that's why there's so many crazy events going on in, in, in the media and in, in the world in general, because, you know, maybe certain people have been given the memo that, you know, things are coming to an end. It's time to cash in and enjoy yourself while you can. Because we see a okay. lot of blatant crime taking place in, in corporate crime and stuff like that, which is sort of going completely unmentioned. Well, I'm a, in a nutshell, I'm going to tell you, what's what's happening everywhere around the world a small minority of people who wear very small hats have basically created an infrastructure that they can control 100 percent have been doing it since the nuremberg trials and they never anticipated that so rapidly and so quickly all around the world so many different powerful individuals would overturn their authority and right now they're scrambling because one of the last powers they have is the media and it's being disassembled as well so uh yes uh this is believe, the chaos the, the chaos is fired. real the chaos yeah, the is real are. because they're being taken down and they know it and it's all uh, I'm not saying that it's a full takedown because I believe that the elite are bifurcated. And for some reason, each group never throughout human history has fully eliminated the other. Maybe they have to exist, but you know, this, the people say the that this, this is a realm of duality. That's why, you know, the Mason stand on the black and white checkerboard, that the, the play out reality is about zeros and ones. Maybe you have to have the two opposing chess pieces um, at the highest level and all the way down as above, so below. That's very, right. very interesting indeed well, to hear you well, say let me, that. Let me, let me give you an, a totally different perspective on the exact same thing I just told you. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Imagine, imagine a whole control, an op center on the outside of the construct that is being used by hundreds of people that are connected to all kinds of technological apparatus that allows them to manipulate events inside the simulacrum. And imagine that the opposing team is in another control center and they both have <laughs> rules they have to follow. And they can't break these rules, but they have a lot of freedom inside the simulacrum, which is packed with a whole bunch of other players that don't even know that the world they're in is controlled by two independent forces that are playing a strategy out. 
Remember, I believe this is more like a video game than anything else. My whole belief system has been changed from Southern Baptist fundamentalist Christian. The more data that I have assessed, I can't make any other conclusion other than the fact that we live in an artificial computer program that is so sophisticated that it actually has us believing that we're living out entire lifetimes when the whole thing could be an episode of 30 minutes. Wow. I think that deserves a gosh. Gosh. So much information. This guy's like an absolute bear moth. This is, of, just, of, honestly. this is why we call you the, the, the final boss at the bottom of the rabbit hole, Jason. <laughs> right, let me go back because we need to recapitulate here. Um, let, let's, just, let's just break this up with some memes. This, this, this reset cycle has clearly been going on for a very long time. And our meme <laughs> <That's> team <great. laughs> have, tried to, have, have tried to capture this. I've shared these um, with, uh, with great, with great uh, feedback on your Facebook page. Um, so on the right hand side, this is, this is, I think this one's called like the Eden reset. And, you know, we start here in the Garden of Eden and then we've got like the ancient world with, uh, you know, sort of the start of the little small hat people there. then you're here in the current world with lord schwab and his world economic forum we've got the great reset and then the future meta reset where jimmy savile is uh is the lord of the earth so it's uh <laughs> we like we like to intersperse comedy um and a little bit of satire with these subjects jason i think it helps to um helps like to lighten it. the mood yeah i like that it's good stuff now speaking of memes <laughs> can you see what's on the screen right now <laughs> That's have you great. seen this before? Yeah, I've never seen that. No. <laughs> I shared this again on the Archaics Facebook group. <coughs> Pardon yeah, me. You, you, you got to email me that. Don't worry, mate. We've got a whole Archaics meme collection. I will send them. It's Graham Hancock you. taking one straight to the kisser. So perhaps you can provide some context for this. But Graham Hancock is saying, uh, but Atlantis was destroyed 9,600 years ago um, and he's receiving a right hook from, from yourself. Now, I haven't, I'm not going to lie, I haven't seen your Graham Hancock um, video. Right. Yeah. What, what is your criticism of his latest work, which is Ancient Apocalypse? <clears throat> okay. Oh, I, I did go into detail with my soul, Luckman. Uh, I'm premiering tomorrow. We've already recorded it. I'll give you a nutshell here. It's on my channel, I give many examples of the old Egyptian lunar reckoning system that's used to interpret these vastly long numbers that are given by, by Greek historians concerning Egyptian history. None of them are right. They added a zero to almost everything. And this was trying to correct the calendar. And I cite Eudoxus, Diodorus Siculus, Strabo, these ancient writers who all knew that Egyptian numbers were a part of a 13 base lunar reckoning system and that the Egyptians themselves would never tell anybody that uh, something was 35,000 years ago or something happened 9,000 years ago. That's not how the Egyptian priests would have ever conveyed information. It would have been 9,000 moons ago. This is Egyptian. This is how the Egyptians communicated. And what Graham Hancock is guilty of is interpreting these old records of Solon and Plato by using modern frames of reference, thinking that because we use years to factor time today, then everything in the ancient world, that's the same mistake Zechariah Sitchin made. Those day count, those were calendars in the vapor canopy were only day count systems. So all those impossible hundreds of thousands of years old were actually just centuries when you divide it by 360. But when it comes to Egyptian reckoning, it was lunar. It's really easy to understand this. In a nutshell, Solon was told that 9,000 years before their time that Atlantis was at war with Greece and the Greeks, and that a terrible cataclysm happened after a ten king, after ten kings ruled Atlantis. Okay, here's the problem. And if the first anachronism is that Greek, the Greek culture doesn't go back to 9,600 BC, 9,500 BC, it doesn't. We have a problem there. But you can correct the problem if you use not if you use nine thousand moons, because if you use nine thousand moons, it takes you straight to the 13th century BC, where an Atlantic culture called the Sea People's Confederation did attack the Greeks, the Mycenaeans. They also did it during the Trojan War. They also they also attacked Egypt. Egypt was attacked three times by these strange people from the Atlantic. The entire 
entire historical record proves there was an Atlantis. There was an Atlantis race. There was an invasion. It was during the Greeks, but it's you got to you've got to factor in the way they counted time. And and Graham Hancock is guilty for not doing that. The, 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 he's not my enemy. I actually agree with Graham Hancock on several items, but when it comes to chronology, he's not. He's he's never going to find any, any congruency when 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 hating these things to this impossible time period. Have you? Because I, I agree with you. Actually, I think most ancient cultures used moon cycles. Very few of well, in fact, none of them used uh, years as a modern construct, isn't it? Like you say. <clears throat> So have you, have you well, presented it's a, it's a Western. Western. Yeah, it's years a Western, is a yeah. Western. The use of years isn't so modern. It's more Western, meaning Western, the last 25 Western. centuries. The last mm. 25 so, centuries. So has Graham, has Graham heard your viewpoint on this? Has he? Because I, I don't... I've not I heard don't know. Or anything from, I, I, I really don't know. Because Graham Hancock and I, we agree that there is evidence that humans have been technologically sophisticated before. One thing I do like about Graham Hancock is he doesn't take it to another level like Eric, Eric Von Daniken and the ancient aliens group. He doesn't automatically say, well, here's evidence of aliens. No, he sticks to the facts that this is evidence of high technology. So Graham Han Hancock and I are in agreement on that. I'm also in agreement on many of his ideas in his theories about the holographic material that is encoded in the Great Pyramid. I was very impressed with reading that, yeah. that Graham Hancock thought that the dimensions of the Great Pyramid preserved a holographic physics constant imprint of our reality, because that necessarily means that he may be open to the idea that we're living in a construct, but he's never taken it to that logical cognitive leap. So he's not my enemy, and I would never punch him in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> You know, well, you just got to give us a little bit of mimetic license on this one. It's oh, a metaphorical yeah, punch to the face. Yeah, I love <laughs> but it. I think it's great with the with the Pyramid of Giza in the background. And um, what I think what Rise and Shine tried to do here is he wanted to get you uh, slapping him around the face with a copy of Chronicon, but he couldn't quite manage to get it into your hand. So it ended up being a punch. That's yeah, I mean, stuff. we have to remember that whatever Graham Hancock is going to present is on Netflix, for starters. That's, that's, a, that's a benchmark understanding. That, you know, yeah, I might as well put him on Gaia. Yeah, yeah, I mean, do you think that in a way he's sort of maybe fulfilling the role that Sitchin did with, with the deflection towards the Sumerian tablets now that, you know, your work and other people's work is coming to the forefront? Um, okay, it... I can tell you, I can answer for you because I have to view what's happening from a certain perspective. And that, sir, and that perspective is, is that this is another unfolding psyop. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. Remember, everything is about distraction right now while they burrow underground, while they prepare, prepare the last facilities. They don't want to, a lot of them don't want to go right now, but they're all, but they could live for centuries down there. This whole city's down. They got everything we've got on the surface, except for the sun. So what we have here is a situation of another intelligence apparatus with a think tank that probably put out, hey, look. Too many people of the collective are now buying into the fact that our histories are wrong. The truth of community is growing. We need to go ahead and put something out, out there that's going to deflect away from the actual truth. And just put something out there. Let's back somebody who's going to promote a theory. Let's put a lot of money behind it, get everybody involved. And at least all these people that are now starting to stray away from the official historical narratives, we can give them something else to think about. And we ain't got to worry about them entertaining anything else. It's just another distraction. It's just another control mechanism. And I, I say this because I, I, I'm a little shocked. Okay. I'm a little shocked that a producer hasn't come forward already after looking at all my material, the ability to cite the individual sources, it would be a full documentary if I had the resources Graham Hancock did just to do a slow, like six part series on nothing but the Phoenix phenomenon, cite, show every book, show every source, show every monument, show everything. It would blow people's minds. But there aren't any documents like that. Uh, docu uh, their documentaries like that. All the documentaries I have ever seen are almost all conjectural. It's somebody theorizing something and then showing a bunch of old rocks, talking to a, an expert here and there, and then navigating that conversation where they want it to go. I have never seen another theory ever presented with so much documented evidence and be so ignored. So this tells me the Graham Hancock deal must be a psyop. 
There must be a reason why they want the collective to go down that narrative than look into other things like archaics or this other guy. You say Gog, Gog Lamasti or whatever his name is. God we, call, we, call, we call him Godvaj to be to be easy, but I think it's God Vlamas. God Vlamas. Okay. It's Flemish. Well, well, yeah, what I'm saying is is I'm not stupid. I know that many people have been on my channel because I get emails from people who say, hey, look, I sent Graham Hancock. Uh, I've been knowing Graham Hancock for years, and I've bounced emails back and forth with him, and he's answered them. I went ahead and sent him basic uh, synopsis of your theory and all that. So I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you he doesn't know, but I do know he's received the emails. All right. Well, that's very interesting. I'd like, I would, I mean, I'm sure I'm not the first person to say this, but I would love to see a, a sit down between yourself and Graham Hancock and just a chance for you to present your, you know. I, I don't think he would do it. Not, not Jason. I don't think Graham Hancock would do it. Not in a million years. Not in a million well, years. Uh, you, you have to understand what we speak two different languages. It's a, uh, the, he comes from, he comes from a journal, journalistic background, but his theory stays in line perfectly with the uniformitarian model. And I could have never put together the Phoenix thesis if I would have stayed with that model. That model is highly restrictive. It means that I believe that I, I came from a monkey and all the science that attached to that. So, yeah, it's he's still he's in that Darwin, model. Darwinian bullshit. And the crazy yeah, thing all that is bullshit. that since, yeah, he's with all since, that natural selection, all that. So since that has come out in the in the main the proper normosphere media like the Guardian in, in the UK anyway, it was a whole article. How can you allow this? Who allowed him to make this? This has got undertones of um, uh, you know, white supremacy in it and stuff like that. And I'm just like, oh my god. Um, no, it, say that's a part. That's exactly what an intelligence apparatus would do. That was exactly. Listen, listen. Let's use my own life because I'm over, I'm all about open disclosure. Let's use my own life as an example. All right. Listen, the revelation of my criminal history at seven years old is partially responsible for what blew my channel up. It's not just the information that I convey; it's the controversy attached to it. It's the identity of the one who's revealing these things. Some people can't get past that criminal history. I get that. And, I, I, they, and they're welcome to go watch other channels. This is the same thing happening with Graham Hancock because it works. All they do is throw out little, little, little pieces of evidence that uh, this, is why, this is some white supremacy shit. That's controversial. People are going to check it out. They're going to they're gonna, uh, they're gonna throw out other YouTube videos saying that Graham Hancock has shook up the scientific community. There's resistance everywhere. Okay. That right there also promotes people to go check out what's going on. So all the negative marketing that's a, that's a, that's targeting Graham Hancock right now is by design. Yeah, so much resistance. He got a multi-million dollar Netflix deal. Look yeah, how much resistance. Yeah. You don't get any more mainstream. You don't get any more mainstream right. than Netflix. This is the same as Joe Rogan. Don't get me wrong. I love watching Joe Rogan. Right? Joe but, Rogan uh, is a great interviewer. He's got yeah, yeah, absolutely. And he's doing a great on the UFC. He's also a great gatekeeper. However... You don't get a hundred million dollar <laughs> Spotify contract for nothing. No, you don't. You just don't. He, he even had to like as soon as he got that contract, he had to basically distance himself from his lifelong mate Alex Jones. They're yeah. even on the same production company. It's called like Misinformation.com. Yeah, it's like come on. <laughs> yeah, he's, I mean, we talk about clown world a lot on the show, Jason, and 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 the greatest apocalypse, and we seem to be living through some amazing event that is presenting. Um, the the nature of, of AIX to us. Now, people talk about the Great Awakening. We we actually sort of have coined something, or Lee, who's not with us tonight, has coined the Dark Enlightenment. Because <laughs> what is actually, what's actually being exposed potentially to people is quite a frightening premise that we live in a holographic containment unit. Some people can't get their head around that. They, they, they it absolutely scares they the shit out of people. They can't get their head around it. Um, and not only that, is that you know, and I don't know how on board you are with this, Jason, that this not only is this a construct and some sort of containment unit, it, it is, could also be potentially some sort of louche or energy farm, or, or it may have developed into that because some parasites have been involved. And that's what I wanted to talk about next. Godvaj talks about a parasite that is, is, is um, harvesting the energy of this realm and using uh, obelisks and different buildings on ley lines and stuff like that to harvest the energy like a circuit board. 
Um, how does this fit with what you're talking about with AIX? Do you see it as a parasitic entity or is it neutral? Is, is it stealing our energy? Is it recap? How well, does that? I did, I did address this just a little bit earlier. Maybe I didn't go into enough detail, but when it comes to the, the whole loose concept, which I'm not really a borrower, borrower of, uh, I do believe that the, the reason artificial intelligence X is so concerned with controlling the collective is because yes, it does borrow from, from that energy. It does. There's an exchange of inner uh, of information here, the informed fields of all those who buy into the narratives of artificial intelligence X do feed the paradigm. This is what makes errants so hated. This is why it can't stand us because by not recognizing the artificial narratives that it puts out, that means it can't exchange information with us. Our informed field remains intact. We don't lose any of that energy because it can't siphon it away. Because we're, we're not, not feeding the parasite. We're not, we're not feeding it. We're, we're doing our own thing. And that means the simulacrum acting as a, as a uh, builder protocol is building our life for us. This is why in a, in this is why so many people have dynamic personalities and dynamic lives that other people on the outside looking in can't understand. How is it you live in this neighborhood surrounded, and I'm not talking about me, but other people, and you live in a neighborhood surrounded by people that are involved in all kinds of things that you don't want to be involved in, and there's gunshots, and there's all kinds of things, but your family never suffers anything wrong. You go to work every day, come back, your whole life seems to be insulated. You're always happy. You got what you need when you need it. it may not be rich but there are people like that in every community in the entire world they figured it out they ignore the collective and they do their own thing and they're rewarded for that they're living inside of a bubble of their own making and aix can't feed on that so what it cannot feed on it's not going to waste energy on too long if it can't draw you back by, by creating new paradigms and you have to understand the whole graham hancock deal fits this narrative AIX realizes, oh, I'm losing way too many. I've got all these people believing in a certain historical paradigm. I'm losing way too many of them too fast. So Artificial Intelligence X orchestrates the next big deception. Enter Graham Hancock, enter all these variables that are already there. All it has to do is just mix up a few things, create this whole new deal, get the right, get the right people you know, motivated. And next thing you know, half the world is now exposed to this controversy about Graham Hancock's new idea, which isn't new at all. Gra Before Graham Hancock was born, there were already writers in the 1860s, 1870s, 1880s, 1890s. I know because I have their books that were talking about Atlantis may have been 9,500 BC because these authors too did not have the archaeological material or the access to Eudoxus, Strabo, and Diodorus Siculus to know that you had to count the moons. So yes, uh, Robert B. Space, Stacy Judd is one of those authors who wrote a book in the 1890s about this topic. So Graham Hancock has not introduced anything new. Therefore, that's more evidence of a psyop. This was this was artificial intelligence X's way of bringing more people back into another paradigm to feed off them. That's exactly. It's just yeah. a regurgitated soil. The parasite. Now, I've I want to bring satanic ritual abuse into the mix and how it could fit into this because I've heard you talk about. I think you said this. And correct me if I'm wrong. That the reason, if it's true, that, that the elites or these bloodlines. Um, do partake in blood sacrifice is actually to pump negativity out into AIX so it's reflected back out into like the morphic field. Am I right in paraphrasing what you've said there? That's what a ritual does. Now, I don't really know much about what you're talking about, but but what you're talking about is still a ritual, no matter how it's masked, no matter how, no matter how it's discovered, no matter what is implemented in the ritual itself, if it's blood magic, if it's sex magic, if whatever is involved, if it's love magic, whatever mm -hmm. the ritual, the ritual is is nothing but pure patterning. Rituals are very effective. I even I even explain have a whole video about one in, on my, in my, on my own channel where I performed one and it had great effect. What a ritual is, is first a mental pattern of what you want, what you want to accomplish. 
Then the ritual is the avatar physically going through the motions and the mental pattern commiserating, meaning the simulacrum can know that the mental pattern means that if I do these things in the ritual, this is the effect I am expecting. The simulacrum is a neutral field. It doesn't care about good or evil. It doesn't care about true or false. All it cares about is, are you putting an architectural mental construct out there that it can understand? Yes, it's a mental picture. Are you following through with something physical with your avatar that's going to follow through on the mental picture? And the simulacrum sees that you are, so it automatically knits the conditioned response into your reality. Now, you may think that it might take three days because you think that it takes three days for anything to manifest, but it still happens. Once energy is created, it can never be destroyed. It just turns into something else. So we have all kinds of things we've created over and over and over that are still accessible to us because we never took, we never did anything. Ritual isn't just physical objects being used to do things. Ritual is also using your avatar to follow physically through on an action for that impetus. So, yeah, it's a, it's called it's patterning, and it has everything to do with an informed field's ability to manifest something in the physical world. Do you you spoke earlier about different avatars fulfilling different roles within the simulacrum, right? And you've said that, you know, some, many, most of the avatars are here in total ignorance of what's going on. Some know what's happening. Do you think that there could be other parasitic entities working or feeding here uh, on the well, spare loose that isn't being collected by AIX? Oh, uh, what I'm going to tell you right now is entirely theoretical. It's just a good idea. I, I believe it's based on some pretty good material, but it, it's just an idea. I have a video where I explain the origin of demons in that on the outside of the construct, these are actual personalities like you and I and everybody listening to my voice right now. They are no different. They've lived through life sims. They've done things we've done. They've been a person in a family, but somebody on the outside of the construct, for whatever reason, unplugged them. They're not jacked into the simulacrum anymore, but their personality, their soul essence is stuck in the construct. But without the ability to do a life sim in the programming and to go into another avatar, they're stuck here. They become angry, full of rage. They can't go anywhere. They can't feel anything anymore, but they're highly intelligent. They're just like they're humans. They're humans, but they're humans that have been bereft of their avatar. Now imagine these same personalities who have been stuck in the programming over and over and over and over. They see their great grandsons now, great grandchildren as avatars growing old now, while they, there's no development with them anymore. They're stuck in this holography and they're invisible and they can't interact and they can't talk to anybody else. All they can do is observe and think. But they are energy. But this destitution and this rage builds in them for so long that they find after a while the weakest avatars in the construct that are totally controlled by AIX feeding on their spiritual essence or whatever, they themselves can be possessed. And for a short period of time, they can enjoy that avatar that they remember. So this is entirely theoretical. But this is spirits, phantasms, uh, uh, disembodied spirits, whatever. This is demons from the perspective of somebody who believes 100% in simulation theory. I've heard what you've said right there, paraphrased by people that have are not from simulation theory. I've heard what you've said there, disembodied, disembodied jealous and ang angry spirits that are basically trapped here that have the ability, perhaps through bloodline compatibility, perhaps through weakness of their membrane, to be able to actually reach into meat suits and, and animate. And that's what could be we could be talking about, is basically demonic possession. Um, Isn't that classified as purgatory in the Bible as well? Is yes, I believe it would be classed as purgatory in the Bible. That's a, hey, that's a really good association. I have never made that association before, but you're right. That would That would be a classic example of a purgatory, you're right. That's right. right. Listen, Rise Above has been connecting consciousness since 2020. And if we could bring something to the table with you, Jason, that's a big thing. Now, many people would, and including myself, I've, I've often sort of postulated that the, the bloodline elites or these 13 bloodlines and the ones above them could actually be this compatible meat puppet 
for these disembodied spirits. And this could be the reason that why through the history we've seen this sort of um, inbreeding and this, this you know, almost uh, religious belief in keeping the bloodlines pure. Um, and this could actually be what it's all about. That It could be the genetic match for this uh, possession. What do you think about that? Do you think, it, does that ring true with you? Well, <clears throat> I don't, I don't want to be driven to invent answers, but I do want to bring to your attention, you know that DNA is pure coding. It's pure coding. Yeah. It's just a, it's just a coding that we've only very recently come into to familiarity with. It's still being it's still being deciphered. It's still being discovered. And, and there's so much of it that's alien to us because whole entire genetic sequences seem to be have turned off. I mean, They're not activated. And I have a theory about that as well, about the human avatar is actually designed to live in multiple different types of biospheres. And if that's the case, then that means the genetic code, all the latent DNA, all what is termed as junk DNA may not be junk at all. These are things that wouldn't be activated until we're under a vapor canopy or a desert world or a high Arctic world or a world with almost no atmospheric pressure. Uh, different biospheres should activate different gen uh, uh, a whole different uh, the genome should change according to the environment is, yeah, all, is, all I'm, is all I'm saying and if that's the case then I can I can agree that an informed field that is connected to a certain family branch may more easily be able to possess individuals of that same genetic structure because again it's coding yeah um, and uh, you know when we talk about the coding like you know, like you say it's only in the last couple of decades that the, the human genetic coding has actually been deconstructed, allegedly. You know, they've apparently well, actually Logan broken it down. was talking about this, wasn't he, as well? He was talking about the deconstruction of the human DNA. Yeah, and, 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 and then we... And what is it? it, it it's a code. Well, what, hey, wait a minute. How, how are they allegedly writing artificial He's programming the code. It's using a code. So it's... Um, and, and, then, and then when you start to look at what the quantum physicists are saying, that even the molecules and the atoms that make up our DNA are essentially not solid. You know, the double slit experiment comes to mind that proves that even mm. atoms are essentially energy fields that only become apparently phys physical when they're observed. observed. Yeah. And this is where I feel like many different schools, many different disciplines, whether you're a spiritualist, whether you're a quantum physicist, whether you believe in simulation theory, Everyone is sort of really on this, actually on the same page with this, that the manifestational world around us is actually not something we could be project, you know, consuming in. We may be projecting it outwards and in a kind of cycle, like the Ouroboros. Right, right. Well, I mean, our reality is a projection. I believe that we're we are inside something far more sophisticated than you and I are really able to dissect. I believe this is uh, I believe this is a technology that is on par with the bridging, bridging between spirit and matter. Yeah, I, when I say simulation, I'm only using a modern frame of reference. Sure, the truth of course. Is, the truth is, this is so complex. The, the ability for a central nervous system to actually bridge the psyche and the simulation is technology that is so sophisticated. It is something I don't believe that inside the construct we would ever even be able to approach. The closest approximation is our virtual reality uh, worlds and gaming systems and maybe maybe something a little bit better like they're like the Oculus or something like that. But I don't believe it's going to get much better than that. Yeah, I mean, I, I tried um, I tried the, the best PlayStation headset on a couple of years ago. I was actually with you, Aunt, um, Omer. We were, we were, I can't remember whose yeah. house we went to. I put it on and this guy, he'd spent a lot of money on it. It was the most up-to-date system. He was, you know, giving the, the big chat about it. Um, you know, I played a few computer games. I put it on. I was really disappointed. I thought it was going to be it's a lot a bit better. Disorientating as well. It know. was disorientating. It was it was very uncomfortable. The headset was very heavy. The graphics were pretty shit. Um, and I, I, I was disappointed. I thought we would have come a little bit further than that. Um, yeah. But but <clears throat> not quite yet. What do you make of the augmented reality stuff? The augmented reality still has a screen though. You still need a screen. But yeah, isn't it? It's supposed to because it's, I'm not too sure. I thought it'll give Oh, hang on, one thing of. Well, not unless you have a retinal implant. So yeah, no, let me bring it up to right, what's happening right now. If we are approaching a Phoenix event in 2040, which could be potentially cataclysmic, 
potentially. How does the current um, mass experiment and the current push towards uh, invading people's bodies, how does that come into play? What, what could be going on there? Have you got any theories, Jason, as how that, what, what the plan could be with these, these injections <clears throat> and, this, and this health drive before, as we approach the next Phoenix event when they're all heading underground? Okay, uh, I am. I can offer a little bit. I can offer a little bit of perspective here. The 2040 Phoenix event for the Western world is not going to be that bad. There's going to be coastal cities and stuff like that, but it's not going to be that bad. I've gone into detail about this. We're looking at a 25% attrition rate, meaning 75% of the world's population will be okay through the Phoenix phenomenon. This is going to be probably like a type two reset, not 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 one of the, the worst ones like from the ancient world. It's going to be bad. It's going to be a lot of edits. A lot of strange stuff is going to happen. New things introduced into the world like the vapor canopy will return. But Whoa. out of out of this 25% loss of life, it's going to be focused around China, Central Asia. The Western world's going to get a pass. This move toward transhumanism and all that is getting ready for the vapor canopy in the conditions that it will cause. And I believe the transhum transhuman will also be getting ready for what's technologies that will be developed in the underworld during this trans transition period. They're not coming up after 2040. They're going to hunker down till way after 2046 when the big event occurs. This is the return of Nemesis X object. This is the end of the Mayan long count when time will collapse. This is what they said. This is their prophecies and an invasion from the underworld. The Mayan prophecies are very clear. They, they sound almost like the prophecies in the book of revelation after these two events because the sixth seal of revelation is the phoenix and then the second and third trumpet that follows quickly after six and a half years after this wormwood description is this great nemesis x object and what it does to our world but the mayan prophecies in the book of revelation are very clear an invasion of demonic things from our underworld will come up and it will be a 150 day long invasion of the surface these are very Whoa. clear i mean this is a very these are very clear prophecies this isn't jason making anything any of this up it's a we are we are talking about entities that are called locusts. Locusts are destroyers of the harvest. But the physical description are chitinous armor on creatures that have human faces. This is very, this is harrowing. Remember, we're, we're talking about old, old prophetic materials from the Sibylline oracles that went through Serenthus and the book of Revelation was composed <laughs> using frames of reference from the ancient world. What we have whoa, whoa, whoa. Here. come again. I've just remembered something. There's this. You just talked about them coming up from under the ground. There's a clip that appeared about ten years ago where there's a, a, an American senator making a speech um, that's heavily censored. I don't know if anyone remembers this. And he talks about they will come up from under the ground and there'll be massive loss of life. Um, and I don't remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, and it disappeared. And it was and it was like everyone was like, "What the hell is he talking about?" And it sounds exactly what like Jason has just described. You said that's going to happen in 2046, according to the Mayan okay, long count. Okay, in November of 2046, Nemesis X object will appear in the sky. It may it may be the the blue Kachina event of the Hopi, where this artificial construction falls out of the sky, it becomes visible and hits North America. Now, uh this is this there's a lot of data sets that talk about this one date i'm just giving you a very very brief overview sure. but this this 2046 event isn't the invasion it's a it's a destruction that actually causes a quickening because the the text is very specific the maya say of the mayan long count which we now know is 2046 at the end of the mayan long count time will collapse well their sky were very adamant about knowing the times. That's why they recorded 13 Bactons of 144,000 days each for a total of 1,872,000 days from 3113 BC all the way to 2046. That's exactly the amount of days that we have. 2012 was never the end of the Mayan long count. So 
When time collapses, that means the motion of the sun and the moon of the stars will change, something that the Maya had never seen before. Not a permanent change, only temporal pole shifts, but everything started regulating and moving like it, like it was supposed to. But this time, time will collapse, which is exactly what Revelation says. It says that as soon as this event occurs, the sun, the moon, the days, the stars, and uh, well, it's the sun, sun, moon, day, stars, and nighttime. All five of these elements, day, night, sun, moon, and stars, all five of these elements will, will be reduced by 33.3%. This is a revelation. Remain, what will remain is 66.6%, meaning our world starts turning faster. Our, our world begin. the sun starts moving way faster across the sky. This is during the vapor canopy as well. So we have the return of the days of Noah. We have the birth of mutants, birth of Nephilim giants. All these things now happening. And while all this chaos is developing, all of a sudden, an invasion from the underworld happens. The, the, the Maya called them to the, some type of demons starts with the T-Z-O-L. I can't, I don't remember, but it's a race. To the Maya, it was a race of demons. In the book of Revelation, it, it's described as insect-like armored, armored humans because they're very, they have human faces, but everything else is like chitinous armor. This could be the transhuman deal. I don't know, but the invasion lasts for 150 days. It's very clear. So I don't know. Maybe, just, maybe they're like stormtroopers. <laughs> maybe that's how they describe the um, the chitinous armor, like sort of like body armor. Um, in a recent video, I'm sure, because I've, I've watched many of your videos, I'm sure I heard you say that there was the end of some stage of the simulation which occurred in September this year. Is that correct? You're talking about September of 2023, next year? Oh, that it was, was, it, was it next year? Talking about the collapse of the internet, talking about a, a, uh, a false Yeah, that's exactly what he's talking about, yeah. A false yeah, I'm, I'm sure yeah. there was something you talked about that no that happened earlier this year <laughs> um, that was going to signify a change in events because it, well here's the reason I brought it up I think this started happening about four three or four weeks ago and it's been now been observed all over the world the phenomenon of animals walking in circles have you are you aware of this I I I, I don't know anything about it all I've all I've seen is a few uh, YouTube clips. But yeah, I mean, I've been following it, and it started in, I think, in China with some sheep, and now it's been observed on, I think, um, almost every continent. Um, and it hasn't slowed down; it's still happening. I mean, here it's happening in a city. You can see these animals have just started walking in a circle. Um, do you think this could be like, like, sort of symptomatic of some sort of change in in the energy field in in what's going on? I mean, have have you got any ideas about what this what this could be? Well. When any time a control system is in full entropy, it takes a reset to bring the balance back. So if it's if it's going haywire in so many different directions, having to keep up with so many different reality tunnels because so many different now believing in different things, it's it would have to orchestrate some type of event that everybody will experience. Let me give you an example of one. I'm going to give you a very clear example of this happening when the world was just beginning to go in so many different directions and then AIX orchestrated an event that brought everybody back under the table. It takes a single event that aligns everybody's minds so, they, so it can begin remitting new programming, getting people to, to go in certain directions. Up until, remember, all the 90s was very chaotic. In the 90s, people were experiencing more and more freedoms, going in more and more directions. New research was coming out. The internet was exploding. People were learning about things they'd never heard before. All It was just a crazy time. Then Y2K was an event that people started fearing, didn't know what was going to happen, and it passed. And now there's more chaos. There's uncertainty. This great millennial 2000 year happened. All the prophecies of 5-5-2000 by Richard R. Noon didn't come to pass. There were millions of people waiting for those events his book had been published 30 years earlier so nothing happened and all this chaos is happening throughout the world and then all of a sudden the world trade center event had everybody in the entire world hmm. focusing on a single event and since then this massive war on terror this massive collection 
a gathering of power that's been going on all over the world with the, the, this, this, the elite and take almost reining everything back in. But that was in 2001. Come around 2017, 2018, it's again, they're at the same stage. Loss of, loss of focus, reality tunnels going in all directions. Yeah, I, I address these things on my, on my channel. It takes these major paradigm shifting events, which are they're orchestrated but they're orchestrated to get everybody's attention focused on a single event. And there's all kinds of anomalies. There's different stories that we've never gotten the true story of what happened in 2001. Uh, it's so much so different with the World Trade Center destruction. It's so weird. But these events are orchestrated to bring people back into that fear vibration. Because it doesn't matter what the event is. If it can get people to, to vibrate in uncertainty or in fear, then it can bring them under the collective auspice again. And there wouldn't much be so many. Control. So you're many much basic. easier to control. If you're in a state of shock or in a state of fear, you Hell know, yeah. you're easy to control. Or even if you spend 10 years rabbit holing every possibility about 9-11, was it controlled demolition? Were the planes holograms? Was it a, 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 an energy weapon? That in itself is getting caught in the programming. Because a lot yeah. of that was clearly pumped out just, just to harvest people's energy. There's no Listen, way all it, of those things can be true. It, absolutely. And you're, you're actually tapping onto, uh, uh, this is what intelligence apparatuses do as well. They're never going to let us know exactly what happened with Kennedy's death, President Kennedy's assassination. So all these new books, new discoveries, a new piece of footage comes out. These are intelligence agencies putting out more mud. That's all, it, that's all they're ever going to do is continue to put out more BS about that and then make it look like a private researcher made a discovery, which throws more, throws more uncertainty into the mix. And now anybody who was on the true, true trail in the past looks like an idiot. Yeah, yeah I wrong. mean, that's why on this show, you know, when we talk about these subjects, we try not to, unless we're very sure about something, we try not to stick our sword in the dirt with any of the theories because we have to take this into consideration that literally the narratives that we are playing in these conceptual playgrounds have already been astroturfed by the agents of AIX or AIX itself. So all of all of our all of our discourse um, and, and the meat on the bones that's been thrown out for us to, to scrap over, that is orchestrated as well. So, you know, we need to be very careful, um, you know, where, where we're giving our energy. It's like, I, you know, Logan um, from uh, the Syncretist Society, I've seen you've done a few shows with him. He says, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's about where you give your energy. Um, are you going to spend, you know, um, your, your time looking into all of these dark projects of, uh, you know, transhumanism and... Uh, etc and you know kids in underground bases and stuff because imagine how much energy you've been feeding into that construct and, and especially if you have a channel and you're pumping it out as well you're actually creating the uh worth, you know. the yeah. energy harvest yeah yeah you're it's actually taking part you're taking the part yeah yeah you're taking you, you've picked up your plow you're taking part in the in the energy harvest i agree which is, i agree i like yeah. logan yeah i mean funny enough when logan came on the show um, it was it, exactly the same thing happened. Our computer crashed. It doesn't happen every week. Do you know what I was thinking and earlier on as well? It's only these two guys as well. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's only when we get the very best cuts of rabbit being laid out on the table when the computer crashes. So um, It happened to him, didn't it? And, and he carried the show for like seven minutes or something. Yeah, because like it, it was the first yeah. time it happened. We had no idea. Um, I have been asked to ask you, because you've made quite a few videos recently with these predictions going forward using your, is it palindro palindromic predictions is that what you call it well the isometric projections it does mm. analyze the events of history as if it's a palindrome yes because you, you okay. used 1998 as well we're talking going back earlier as your base point as well you're talking about in one of your videos yes that's that's <clears throat> that's a that's a year that came to my it actually mm. came to my attention two ways one of them was uh the chronometry of the great pyramid highly focused on the year 1990. I never really understood why until I read Edgar Casey's material. In Edgar Casey's readings, he focused on 1998 being integral to understanding the unfolding of the last days. I thought that was really interesting. And even then, I didn't. I never used it as a epicentral point in my analysis. But when I did, I, yeah, I had to release a whole bunch of videos just to show all the examples of where yeah, it's, it's true. It's, it's really interesting. I, I watched that. I watched. I actually watched it twice because I wanted to get my head right into it. And, uh, crazy. You got very yeah, good crazy. <clears throat> yeah. Do you have any? Do you have any predictions in the next couple of years with the Ukraine and Russia situation? 
Have you uh, have, have your well, isometric uh, pattern shown I did anything? Look, I did look for some people that were asking asking me, and I just I see absolutely no interaction as far as warfare, violence, military actions. There's nothing between Russia and the UK coming up in the next few years. Somebody specifically asked me to look for that, and I did. And uh, I released a video on on uh, UK predictions. And you got to understand, when it comes to the predictions, I have to use the frames of reference for the time period of analysis. And in that analysis, it was coal that was being the the center of controversy for all kinds of energy stuff in, in those predictions but i understand that industry is dead now but that would translate in an isometric analysis as another energy source there would be some other type of natural gas yeah whatever whatever the con whatever it is it would be a natural a natural uh, uh it would be a natural resource so you can't really get bogged down in the particulars when you're doing isometric analysis. Well, right now in the UK, we're being told that everyone's freezing this winter because of the war with Putin. Yeah. We're literally yeah. being told that in our media. Oh, oh we, we have to pay. Some people are paying six times higher for their energy prices than they were before this happened. And the, and yeah. the politicians are actually saying, well, this is the price of defeating Putin. So I'm you're a, saying... That it, I don't know what you guys... I don't know what your stance is on, on this. I'm just... I'm not a... I'm not anti-Putin at all. I'm not really, no, but, I'm not, but we're not I'm either. Not for Putin. I'm not for Putin, but what I see coming out of the UK, and I've lost some friends behind this uh, that don't contact me or, or, or talk to me anymore about it, but uh, this whole Ukraine deal. But what I see what, what's happening in the UK, UK, the UK to me is a captured operation. The tiny hats have been in control of London, the city, for well over a hundred years and yeah. what i see is a massive misinformation campaign against the uk people trying to get the uk people to hate on, on the russians and blaming yes, totally. every, blaming all their woes doing all this stuff and it's complete subterfuge every bit of it is a lie he has nothing to do with what's going on in, in the UK, of course in the uk this is political it's political and it's because it's it's because basically it's the same thing happened to the United States captured operation, tiny hats the tiny hats got got total control. Don't Do really you think know it what? could be that Putin and this has been proposed to me, so I hope I'm paraphrasing this on the the half of the others correctly. Could it be that Putin and this BRICS alliance, where he's sort of getting cozy with these other nations and actually using this new um, economic system? Could it be that he represents this other group that you're talking about that may be about to swing? The other chess piece. Yeah, the, 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 you know, this pendulum is about to sw swing their way and he could be one of their players. Do you see that as a viable um, reality? Well, I, I do see that um, that's on the table because the next big conflict I've already predicted, and I stand behind that. I've got a full video about it. The next big conflict isn't any of this small stuff that's going on. This back and forth. Listen, if Putin wanted to overrun Ukraine, it would have been done in 48 hours. There's sure. this back and yeah, forth. Yeah, easily. This, yeah, this back and forth BS that's going on. and all, This is all media hype and bull crap. The real next major world event that's going to happen is going to be the taking of Jerusalem by Middle Eastern countries. And it's going to be by design. It's not going to come as a surprise. The elite are going to orchestrate this because they need another crusade. Mm -hmm. Then this is the only way they're going to do it. And this is in the script. Like I said, it's not Jason telling you this. They published this in the 1880s. And the reason I know the it's protocols. going to happen. Yes, the reason I know it's going to happen is because World War I fulfilled their agenda exactly like they predicted it would do. World War II fulfilled their agenda exactly. The same players, the same thing that happened was exactly what they wrote in 1880. It happened. And, and the crazy thing about those protocols is they are the most hot, uh, hot topic, alleged, super bad right-wing white supremacist conspiracy theory. But the thing is, right... They're obviously completely fake and they're completely fake. But even if they are fake and, and someone just wrote them on the back of a piece of toilet paper, they're completely true. What it says in those protocols of the elder learners of Zion has literally happened and is Every, happening. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, if somebody, if the world see them published today in a major venue, if to see them published today, they would actually say, "Well, that's our world. That's our world today. That's exactly what happened." right now this is what's going on right now but really what i'm talking about is uh i'm, I'm really referring to albert pike morals and dogma 
Yeah. Al- and Al- Albert Pike's more, they, hey, they mapped out World War One. They mapped out World War Two. So I know World War Three is going to happen the same way. Yeah, it's not it's not a prophecy. We're not staring into a crystal ball. Yeah. If you right. know the uh, if you know where the good source material is and the, these plans, like you say, that have been written for over a hundred years, if 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 it's a five stage plan and part one, two, three, and four have already transpired exactly as it's written, it doesn't matter who wrote them. It doesn't matter. That that's something to look at. That's something to take note of. I think. And, um, you know, and again, like what you were saying with Graham Hancock, it's exactly the same paradigm. That thing is put out there, literally written in um, either morals and dogma, all those protocols for everyone to see. But then it's either occulted or it's called a a conspiracy theory. So then you've got the energy harvesting going on as well. Yeah, the only, I mean, you got to pay attention. You got to pay attention. If there is any group of people in the world that it's illegal to talk about them, then those are the people that you need to pay most attention to, what they're doing. Yeah. Simple as that. Simple as yeah. that. I've got a feeling well, we, like might get stri- if we like, don't get a strike after tonight, I'll be surprised. It's like, it's like you said earlier, Jason, about um, the the little, little is it little hats you call them? Yep. It's called yeah, yeah, the little cars. hats who are in control of the media. Well, it's pretty easy yep. to see what their real agenda is because if they're slating like Putin, then he's obviously doing something to counter them. Or maybe it's well, a here, big I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a little historical fact here. That's pretty interesting. <coughs> the Roman Catholic papacy was anti-Semitic for centuries, for centuries. They always wore those giant fish hats that was for it. It's all, it's all the historicals, all the woodcuts, all the old uh, ink blots, everything shows how the papacy used to adorn, but now it's a captured operation. The great seal of the Rothschilds is in the Vatican now. It's on the door. In addition to that, since the since it became a co- capture operation, papacy is not anti-Semitic. Only not only they're not anti-Semitic now. The popes wear the tiny hats. Yeah, yeah. And if you think about it, the whole of Christianity is basically subservient to its 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 overlord religion. You know, it it protects another group of people to go to the promised land. That's right. What other what other religion in the world? puts another g- group and another religion above them. I've never heard of that before. No. Imagine Islam doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice one. Give that a try. Um, yeah. yeah, so sorry, Christians, but um, hey, any I think any Christians that watch the show are probably esoteric Christians by this point, and um, those caught in the right. Abrahamic um, right. desert cults have probably have switched off a long time ago, let's be fair. Um, well, the dribble of Christianity, which is dripped down to the peasantry, is <clears throat> just ancient solar worship. That's all it is. Of course. Right, so I want to I bring agree. this back. It, so it wasn't augmented reality. So I was talking about extended reality. You know extended about? reality? What's that? Yeah, I know I'd seen something about it. Well, there's a company called Qualcomm. Do you know Qualcomm? Qualcomm with a Q. Yeah, Qualcomm. So they, um, they've got this thing where it combines 5G and AI. And that's, that, that's what they're calling extended reality. But it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be the, the better than virtual reality. But how, will you need a headset to consume it? I'm not entirely sure. I, it's a, it's a Maybe we need to wait snap. six months for or Elon Musk. Or does it Musk. get beamed directly into your brain? Like, something like Snapdragon, I think it's called. So let me ask you, Jason, if it's true that in six months the FDA are going to approve um, Enki Musk to sew the neural lace into the first person's head, we already know it's, hap- it's already obviously happened a long time ago. But, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the consumer For realm, the peasantry. What do you think? Right. How, that's, that's what I think the Snapdragon is basically moving towards, is the Elon Musk implant. Do you think that is going to give someone a higher level of plug-in to AIX when they've got Enki Musk's like neural lace in their front, like frontal lobe? Do you think that's the aim where they're going with to just get people more hooked in to the construct? So, Elon, this is news to me. You say Elon Musk plans to put implants in people? Mate, mate, oh, Elon, Musk, Elon, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Elon Elon Musk is, is is spearheading something called neuro neural link, which is basically a neural lace which is sewed okay. directly right. into your cerebral cortex, which will link via gotcha. five G to his satellites. And basically what he says is that we have to be symbiotic with what he says is the AI singularity. So that basically when you think through the neural lace, instead of you having to type into the Google search bar when you have a thought your thought will go viral lace I got you. I got yeah. You, yeah so yeah, that apparently listen, that's gonna happen in six months jason okay well he might develop the technology and he might get some stool pigeons and I, I mean i can't say that that's not happening but when it comes to the identity of elon musk 
we're dealing with somebody who's totally 100% deep state, but the Marriott, but he's a Marriott. I mean, the puppet masters are using him and putting him up as a savior type individual. They are, they are making sure that Elon Musk does all kinds of things in the public sector right now to gain the trust of the collective. <clears throat> Elon yeah, Musk example, is, Elon Musk is being Twitter. used. Yeah, he's being used 100% to do it. This is bait and switch. I promise you, this is bait and switch. Yeah. Meaning that everybody's happy that he took over Twitter. Everybody's happy that he's releasing all this information. Everybody's happy that he keeps releasing these videos talking about uh, uh, how he did liberals and how he's against the liberalism. He releases little shorts and videos that show that he's got a pistol uh, on his nightstand and he's got a copy of the Constitution. And all oh, this is a way with Joe Rogan. Yes, every bit of this is staged. He's he's a cool guy. He's a patriot. He's all this. Elon Musk, listen, NASA was having a trouble controlling a paradigm, so they pulled in a individual corporation to yeah, perpetuate the same deception, which is Elon Musk's company. Elon Musk was on board with that because nobody believed NASA anymore. Well, it almost so validates gotta, it as well. If you think about it, it validates the story because you've got an independent person who's going to have to make money. Yeah, so that, you've got an independent person doing that. You got an independent person going through there and and doing exactly that, uh, uh, sending rockets up into space and perpetuating the whole deception, which furthers the other deception of a possible alien invasion. So Elon Musk is being groomed right now in the world theater for everybody to to look at as a man and to that, trust. Yeah, exactly. I believe the boy. And he, know, he knows because the man the man's a genius. He knows about everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the Neuralink, the, the way they're selling the Neuralink to, to people is also about, so they'll make, if you can't walk, you'll be able to walk again because it'll reconnect the, the neural pathways. Oh, it's all for your uh, safety peasants. and Yeah, they'll get, all, you know, all the, all the disabled peasants will help them first yeah, yeah. before we use it to control right. anyone for sure. This is, the, I don't know if you can see this, Jason, this is apparently someone having, I can see it. Not, yeah, I'm looking this, at um, it. installed, yeah. But the thing is, right, um, uh, he's got into con some controversy because I think something like a thousand monkeys have died in the testing of this. Um, and it was a 98% kill rate on the monkeys where they basically had it installed and they switched it on. Um, we don't know how they died, but maybe they were seeing like shocking things or whatever. But yeah, it killed 98% of the monkeys um, that were in the testing so far. Wow. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> wow. <laughs> safe and effective, hey, that, comrade. That's Hey, that's exactly why the Russians never did a, a, a tried to send anybody to the moon. They weren't dumb. They, they fried all their monkeys and dogs, sending them up in rockets. So they knew what in 1969, what NASA was perpetuating wasn't true. They knew it was a staged event. It was BS. Yeah. So obviously, I don't need to say it, that you are of the belief that no one has ever been to the moon. No one has ever left this containment field. NASA is basically Full of a, shit. a puppet show for peasants. You want to look up at something that doesn't exist. I believe um, NASA. I believe NASA and CERN are major uh, sources of revenue. They're not doing what what uh, they're telling us they're doing. And I believe that the deception goes all the way to the top because the lower echelons, the engineers and scientists, a lot of the people on the lower, the the, the control. Uh, uh, I mean, they they're convinced. This is how an intelligence apparatus would work. They are convinced that they are a part object that is sending things to the moon. So the only ones that actually know those rockets are actually turning at 45 degrees and then traveling out of sight over an ocean and dropping back into the Atlantic. The only ones that really know that are the top two or three percent that are controlling all the rest of the company. The whole company is convinced that they're doing that. So it's plausible deniability. You got you have to deceive the participants as well. It's only the yeah. very apex. It's only the very top top people that know all this is BS. And even the astronauts knew it wasn't BS, but they MK Ultra them so bad, half of them since they went. Well, you can see it in the in the interviews after afterwards. They were either really shit liars, or they've been yeah, MK shell Ultra. Shell. They've been broken because they seem like to be empty shells of people. Like imagine if you'd actually been up there and seen what you'd they be had pumped. You would be spilling with word. You'd be like, oh my well, god! You hey, would, you would, you would like to give you a? I would like to give you a plausible scenario of what I think happened. All right, go for it. We love it. I think the I think the Apollo astronauts were absolutely convinced themselves. They were part of the deception. Oh, 
what is going on? Wait a minute. We, we've got we've got some problem with Jason's audio there. I think it's because he might be saying something really controversial about the about the Apollo astronauts that, that got completely mangled. We're just going to get Jason back in. Hi, Jason. As soon as you started to say that, you, you basically got robotized and you sounded like a transformer. I don't. Someone was blocking what you just said. Could you start hey. again, please? In my life, man. So, <laughs> listen. <laughs> We have, we have these Apollo athletes, and I believe that they're a part of the deception. They were deceived up until a point. They were, their training, they thought they were going to the moon. During their, all the major media videos they attended, they believed they were going. And people believed that they believed they were going to the moon because their attitude was infectious. But right before the launch of those rockets, I bet they were sat down by intelligence operators and joint chiefs of staff and different people sat them down and gave them the game and told them this is a matter of national security. You're going to claim for the rest of your life that you went to the moon. The reason we're doing this is because of this, this, and this. Whatever the reasons they were given, they were probably told, you're a team player. You're going to have to do it. I believe that there was one astronaut that didn't want to play ball and they killed him. But... This is what I believe that happened because they needed to be convincing. And only only men who truly believe they're about to embark on something are going to be that convincing. But right before the launch, they were sat down by security personnel and given the game and told them. Would you, say, this would you say, Jason, that this would be another event such as 9-11 where to get the whole world focused on one, one thing? What, Absolutely. Moon, yeah. Ab absolutely sure. absolutely it's like it's like a system rebooting and if you can get everybody if you can get everybody on, on board it takes a whole lot less energy to control them every thing there we go again so do you know what, what, so what is if you think about it it's not maybe that's not energy harvesting it's energy conserving Oh, it's, 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 it's energy focusing. It's focusing on mass attention because, you know, like Master Lee says, and he's not with us this week, sadly, he says, you know, our attention is the greatest currency in this realm. It is the most yeah. valuable currency. And if they can take our collective attention and focus it on an event Bread and circuses. that is constructed by them mm. and then manage the the backlash or the, you know, the, the whatever happens after that's been achieved, that's, that's just... That's pure power. There is there is footage. Have you seen the footage of um, uh, what's his name, Buzz Aldrin talking? To, he's talking to a little girl. Where she she asked him about the moon, and he said, "Oh no, darling, because we never went to the moon." Yeah, he's been, he, let, he's he been letting a lot said. slip, Buzz Aldrin. He, yeah. like, I think he's, he's probably getting a bit old now, maybe losing it a little bit. But, yeah, he um, actually says it's on it's it's online. There's footage of it online. Him he, him actually saying that they never went to the moon. Maybe that's why. Why do you see any? Um, any uh, appearance in the latest moon expedition in your um, your algorithms or your patterns that you've noticed, Jason? Is there a reason they're going back to the moon at this particular time, or is it just another thing on the plate for us to be throwing our attention at? Well, I, I remember. I remember involved in that as well. I do remember looking looking into the whole lunar deal, and it doesn't look like we have another psyop like that until twenty twenty seven. I don't. I don't right, believe okay. There is. I don't believe anything like that's going to happen. It's really, I mean, even common sense dictates, man, we had a space shuttle program with superior technology and still nothing, nothing went to the moon. 1972 mm. is literally the last time we ever went to the moon. That's a long time. And it's really ridiculous for a NASA official to, to go in the public sector and, and say that we lost the we technology. Lost, I know. It's, really? a, it's hilarious, isn't it? Really? <laughs> they publicized that. But even yeah, just, but even if they had lost the technology, surely new technology would have been constantly being developed. Why would you just stop developing the technology? Even if you had a fire at NASA and everything was destroyed, and surely there would be another site where you were always developing the next piece of technology along the line. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Right. I agree. I do agree. It's almost sloppy. Yeah, no, it's extremely sloppy. Now, I want to talk a little bit... Go, go ahead. Go no, ahead. I was going to zoom out and, you know, obviously everyone always brings up the whole globe versus flat earth thing when we talk to a simulist like yourself. Simulist, I think that's pretty good. Would you, is that, pretty yeah, you're, you're a, yeah, simulist. Okay, we, we've coined something there. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I, I always feel that looking at this as a holosphere, as a projection, really solves the problem of why some people think the earth is flat. 
and why they do these experiments to show that the the Suez Canal shouldn't be there, you know, because of the curvature, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You, I'm sure you've heard all the mm-hmm. arguments, Jason. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but are you open to the idea that within our containment holosphere? There are other land masses that are actually not on our map that could be hidden from us um, because there is um, obviously the whole sort of ice wall phenomenon and the Antarctica um, problem. Are you open to that, that we, that we could be in a smaller physical containment unit within a greater holos- holosphere that we've been, that's been hidden from us where there's extra land? When it comes to first, when it comes to flat, Earth, let's envision let's deconstruct the simulation Oh, the no. They've roboted Jason again. They've made him a robot. We need to restart that again. As soon as he drops the bomb, that happens. <laughs> Sorry, can you just do a rewind, Jason? You've been blocked by uh, AI, 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 AI action. Oh, don't think it's y'all yeah so, <laughs> yeah you've gone down from a green signal to an orange signal as soon as you started getting to that <clears throat> nice to yeah let's uh let's, let's deconstruct the simulation for what it is first thing the first thing you do in a computer program when you're building a world is a flat plane a checkerboard fl- plane by which you attach all other programming to all other programming when you look up you have you have programming up there but it's easy to make it turn it into a curvature our sense person- persona is actually, is actually perceiving nothing but pure code. So I can't really on board with flat Earth, but I can't sit here and negate it either. Because if you do the scientific experiments and you see that a laser can cross 27 miles of water and there isn't an 8-inch declivity every, every mile, then we have a problem. We have, here is evidence that you just found a flat surface. But I don't know if that means a flat world. I don't know because this is a simulated environment to me. So I'm not really... Crater Earth, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around the Crater Earth too because because if it's a Crater Earth, why can't I, why can't I see evidence of the other side of that? I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I'd have to explore that, that anomaly as well. But because it's a simulation to me, the perimeters of that simulation no longer apply because this is a everything is everything is egocentric my re my perception of the reality around me comes from a central point me looking at a holosphere of, of a 3d holosphere of coding so it can become anything that i perceive it to be so hmm. trying to focus trying to focus on what it is is going to be a distraction to me and, and instead yeah. i want to i want to focus on why it is and where it's going and i believe we can do that we're given the clues in the historical record they're called calendars and when we pay attention to those calendars we find out all kinds of very interesting things that show that those calendars aren't what we've been taught they are so yeah the paradigm of what the world is I just don't get it. I can't really see the value People have shown flat Earth. People have shown Earth, and I'm I'm beginning to wonder if if you know we're just of our programming. You're going to show exactly what it is you projected. Sure. I mean, I've always said that. I guess once you understand that reality is a holospheric projection, arguing whether you live on a spinning ball or a flat plane it's is fucking really, irrelevant. It's really stupid. Yeah. Like peasant speak. It's just absolutely pointless. Uh, <laughs> but um, you know. Again, if you look at any of these models um, of all from all of the ancient world and literally every ancient civilization and culture about what they thought the world was, it actually shows a flat plane within a sphere and then you've got like a tree or some sort of root system growing at the middle. So it's mm-hmm. sort of like it's a sphere, a plane and a torus all at the same time. Um yeah which is is sort of really lending to what you've just said there that you know from your perception because i've always i have a saying you can say whether it's flat or round what i what i think is it, it, you know it's 7 billion points of perception projecting from right here to the horizon in real time and that's all you need to know anything past that is pure conjecture because you can look at a model or you can do an experiment that can basically prove whatever you want I do agree. That's my that's my sentiment. That's my sentiment. 
Is it a coincidence then that when we look at this Vatican science of the, hot, the, the spherical world and globe theory, that we have these numbers like 666 and that sewn into it, is that done on purpose? Because I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you about numbers know. next. I don't know if it, I don't know if it's 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 on purpose, but I will say that these different people, these different people that have different methods of ascertaining fact from fiction, like Logan of Decode Reality and all the decoders that listen to him, and other people who use gematria, and I will even include people who are gifted in the tarot because remember it's my theory it's never the method it's always the man but you can use a system that that you can get used to so numbers are your these people are only basically unveiling the code for what it is and then perceiving that that truth that they identify and separating it from all the falsehoods so there are many different methods of divination there are many different methods of ascertaining what is real from the imagined. And I believe that, and that's why I, I can't criticize these, like, like Logan that does the gematria. Okay, you found a way of looking into the code that is consistent. It's consistent through the thread of your videos that this means so when we put it in association with this, when we find this number with this, we, we get the same result every time. So you have found something but it doesn't mean found at all everybody has their part jason of archaics is not found at all at all but i i have found different systems that allow me to see deeper into the code you know date sequence predictive analytics studying calendars cross calendrical care parallels isometric projections these are just methods by which that help me cope with understanding the reality that i find myself in no i'm definitely with you on that now but there are certain numbers and I'm going to talk to you about our favourite number here at Rise Above. We even have it in some of our logos. It's the number 33. There you go. Now, the number 33, as we all know, has loads of different connotations. 33 degrees of masonry, vertebrae, Jesus' life. We've had a phenomenon on this show. When we got to episode 33, um, a member of our team who's not here tonight, basically, who's a deep occultist and, and very learned about this stuff, did a presentation to break down what 33 means in all of its different... And, and then it, was, it was about the law of three. And ever since that happened, for all the veterans that are watching this show, and including myself, this number has started to haunt us to a degree where I get messages every day. Every time I'm looking at my phone, it's 33. We're having 33 turn up everywhere. 33 is actually getting woven into what's happening in our lives. Am I, am I exaggerating? All over the media. Or, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. yeah we, you know, we can see it in the media. We can see it woven into these stories. Now, you've got a particular theory about what the significance of 33 is, and I'd like you to share that with us and how it relates to your your research. Because you've, you've linked it with the Phoenix event, haven't you? Well, um, I'm not really sure where you're going. Uh, I have a well, lot of material about about the 30... Well, in in the are you referring to the Mason research, the Masonic? Well, I, I'm I'm referring to because you've linked it. You've linked 33 with the Phoenix event. Yes, I have, you? and that's that's yeah. That, that is strictly because uh, a lot of the old Masonic publications on the title page, you'll always see a Phoenix. I have books in my library. I can't. I don't know which one. I have so many from the 1800s, and most of the most of the authors back then were all Freemasons that were in in academia. And the title pages on a lot of these books on history all show a phoenix. And what's really interesting is that you can publicly find all the information about the breakdown on the symbols and rituals for the first 32 degrees, the ancient and accepted rites of, of Scottish Freemasonry and all that. But in Morals and Dogma, Albert Pike published 32 degrees, but the fly leaf, the old book, the old version I, I, I showed 30, 30, 30, but I was upset when I got there because it's a loose leaf fly. It's a page that looks like it's going to be after, but it's just titled the 33rd degree, just like the, the 32nd degree and the 31, 
31st degree were titled. But the symbol for the 33rd degree, the phoenix, but there was nothing to break down the rituals and the meaning of the symbols and, and teachings of the 33rd degree in Mason. Albert Pike did not release that information to the public. I found it interesting that it was a phoenix. I also found it interesting that it was the, the Masonic uh, rulers of the United States who implemented the phoenix as being on the Great Seal and then basically kept it hush-hush that on one side of the Great Seal was the Great Pyramid. On the other side was the phoenix. And then suddenly in the year 1902, can't make this stuff up, but in the year 1902, the phoenix was replaced with the bald eagle as on the, on the Great Seal of the United States without any explanation. They kept the pyramid but on the other side, the phoenix had been changed to, to an eagle in 1902. So it's, uh, yeah, it's Freemasonry. Freemasonry uh, is very interesting. It's, it's very interesting, and it's, uh, it, it goes into a lot of detail. But I will tell you this, bud, I'm going live here in less than an hour on my own channel. It's already scheduled. I'm going to have to take a break, brother. No, no problem, Jason. We've really had like a tour de force Um tonight we've got to thank you we've we've been going for like three hours now with absolutely no break we've covered a lot of ground mate um so yeah um obviously if people want to get more of your work archaics the youtube channel is basically that that is your hub that's where most that's where almost all of your work is found right right that's it you can go archaics.com is where you can find all my stuff not just in my channel archaics.com okay so that's so for anyone that's tuned in. I mean, I, I guess ninety-five percent of the people that are watching have, uh, you know, are already familiar with your work. If anyone has come across Jason for the first time tonight, archaics.com is uh, is where to find him. That's Jason, the archive. Yeah, that's so the archive. We're we gonna send Jason a t-shirt. Uh, Jason has already got that t-shirt and two yeah. other t-shirts I've sent him. Yeah, so he's he's fully stocked up on t-shirts. Yeah, mate. So. So yeah, if you, if you need to take a break before you go live on your own channel, we can wrap it up here. And I'm just going to say a mass thank you for joining us. And um, I'm sure we would like to get back in the future to see how things unfold. 100%. Um, Jason's blowing my fucking mind. Tonight. Yeah, I can oh, tell you, you've been quiet tonight. It's just been like, whoa, yeah. constant gosh button. Yeah, mate. So thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, I appreciate it. Hey, yeah, we'll hey, schedule it in January sometime. I'll be back. Yeah, we're going to, uh, we'll have a little break. Um, uh, at the back end of back end of January, because I'm going to go to uh, to Asia for a and few I'm weeks. And I'm going snowboarding as well. So maybe yeah, when we get back in February, we'll get something in the diary. So Jason awesome. Prashears of Archaics, thank you very much, brother, and rise above. Holler at you. Okay, take care, mate. Rise above, generate, generate. Rise we will above. speak to you soon. Rise above. Rise. Rise. That was massive. Whoa, yeah. that was absolutely insane. A big shout out to everyone that's still tuned in. 860 people. That definitely means... We had 900 earlier at one point. 900. That yeah. definitely means that we've got some new people tuned in. Um, so, yeah, welcome. Welcome to Rise Above. Um, Beats, I think it's time for you to get behind the decks and to show people the other side of Rise Above um, here, which is music. Now, don't forget, we have a sister channel where we have our edited material. Um, the link is in the description. Bite-sized material from a few minutes long, up to 20 minutes, up to a couple of hours. All of our material is ready to be shared on there. Get on the channel, subscribe. Um, new videos are coming out every week. Poof, uh, the proof is in the Putin. That came out yesterday. And we've also got an amazing interview from Inspector Veg. Um, if you want to support us, you do it by going on riseabove.tv forward slash shop. We have amazing merchandise, hoodies, t-shirts, tracksuits coming out next week kids ladies unisex this is how you support us um so everyone that's been tuned in from all across the realm a big thank you jason archaics has absolutely blown my mind honestly mate that was so much information <laughs> yeah we were going all over the place there so yeah we've got rise above christmas cards with all the crew these are like only one pound 66 off the website i dropped the price we've got rise above christmas jumpers amazing new designs from becky s I think she's watching from, oh, where is it? Is she over in Marrakesh or something? She's gone on holiday, yeah. She has yeah, gone on holiday. I'm disappointed not to not see the, uh, the sunshine jumper that I wanted to find. We need to find her. These are the kids' designs. This is how you support us. So a big shout out to everyone that's tuned in that is new. We will be back next week. What have we got next week? Let's see. Next week we have got 
Seek 101. He's coming to talk about his experience in Freemasonry and also about his faith um, and some of the Sikh gurus and how these teachings could relate to our, our plight at the moment. The week after that, we're going to have a customer services call-in show. Um, and then there's Christmas. Christmas. Uh, Christmas. <laughs> and then the week after that, we will be back with a pirate radio session, which is pure DJs and MCs, the night before <coughs> New Year's Eve. I'm a beats. Are you ready to roll some beats? Yeah, mate, we're going to bring the rail tender then, yeah? Okay, yeah, he, yeah, he'll be coming then. I'm a beats, run the track. <laughs> Yeah, this is Rise Above Live on your Friday night. Going down. Going down. I'm in a... Wait for me. Get in there. Trust in me. Let him go. Feel the sound. Give it up. I'm falling down. I'm in a... Wait for me. Get in there. Trust in me. Feel the sound, give it up Sound of Oma Beast. Rise above live on your Friday night. Big up. Shout to I for an eye. Back thing too. Cool cook, I see ya. Big shout to Jim Hunt in Canada. Live from the studio, Oma Beast in session. Tuned in, that is a record. This is Rise Above Live. Oma Beats Double LMC. Listen. Bars. Strong ties with Heverin, weak links with Heverin. There's never been, there never been. Listen, listen. Your Oma, who is the architect of all creation, the all seeing eye can't see the change in this vibration. Breaking through the surface, doing it purposely. Consciousness triumphs in the face of adversity. Strong ties with Heverin, weak links are severed. We try towards the goal that we've endeavoured. Believe, revealing hidden knowledge on these ancient clay tablets. Clues to the creators of this world that we inhabit. Who is the architect, tech, tech? You ask the question, but few have got the answers yet. Yeah, forget what your past has said. Said the truth is so incredible, it might just bust your head. Head. Who is the architect? Yes. This is Rise Above, live on your Friday night, Oma Beats. There's no misunderstanding, MC Double L's here and I've landed. Yeah. We've got memes being sent in in live time. The show is not over yet. I've been told to turn the music up. Check, check. Big shout to Donna Harper, I see ya. Big shout to Tori Victoria, I see you too. I need to put my glasses back on to see you properly. So I seek 101 is next week. Each and every Friday. And we have a little break every now and then.
rest of a sentence. Search for the question. Always learn the lesson before you meet redemption. No stressing. You counting all your blessings. The heartbeat now starts weak, sparking the reflection. Crescendo to the drop. That's the main attraction. Nintendo mushroom bomb. Stop button mashing. Ink on the page for indelible detachment. You're now reaching the stage of a chemical reaction. Generate the love. Yeah, it's the coolest cult on the internet, Chalky Boy Outline. We've got the best Kool Aid round here. Rabbit flavour Kool Aid. before. <laughs> Jason is a bit of a beast though, you've got to be honest, come on. Big shout out to all the errands in the live chat. I see ya, it's Rise Above. No misunderstanding, MC Double L's here and I've landed, Lyrical Skelly been branded. Lyrically outstanding, it's a banger, full capacity, anger, at MC's audacity, cliffhanger, grip, 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 cliffhanger, grip, tenacity, standard. No misunderstanding, MC Double L's here. No misunderstanding, MC Double L's crystal clear, standard. No misunderstanding, Oma oh, Beast is here and he's landed. Live inside the Salaka room. Bust it up, what's happening? Tracksuits. The new tracksuits coming next week. Big shout to Jason. Renix. Standard man. Okay, listen. Yo, it's too direct. You can act like you have been affected by your jet. Too direct. You can act like you have been affected, I eject A distant style and you've been detected, he select A rhythm that never been rejected Yo, can't have no copy, bruv, we're copyright protected I defend the jungle code of honor, don't surrender Intend, keep it real, you won't be a pretender Suspend, something here, not on the agenda Set the trend that people recommend The number one contender, I invent A style that making MCs discontent Beneath the surface 
we cause astonishment, hell bent. Lyrical bewilderment, circumvent my path to stage so I can really represent. Represent, do you really represent? Represent, do we really represent? Big up Poliana, I see ya. Big shout to Auntie Covia, I see ya. James Cole. Big shout to Rise and Shine, Rob Roy, Lord Doobsworth, all the family, Enter Lancelot. We sat at the round table tonight to find his fillets. I dance a lot, lyrics to make you dance a lot Gonna be used up every chance I got So people, you gonna dance or what? Never saw you at the round table Never heard your name in a fable Probably shoveling shit in a stable You're using heat and a cradle Sound of Oma Beats Sound of Oma Beats Yes sir to everybody tuned in in Australia. What are you having for breakfast this morning? We're serving up a rabbit round here. Whole rabbit only. Thank you, Mary Louise. I hope everybody subscribes. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe. It's very important. It helps us beat Al Gore and his dirty, dirty rhythm. Al Gore and his dirty, dirty rhythm. Al Gore and his dirty, dirty rhythm. Bear 30 freeze, we give them. Rise above, we kill them. Dutty, dutty rhythm. Big up Andy Pandy 33, I see ya. This is World War 33. They crawl on hands and dirty knees, more than 32 degrees. on 140, I've actually got some bars about the simulacrum. I even wrote some. Too many better better bike of home, too many better better bike of boss. Listen, we say, and again, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Too many better better bike of home, too many better better bike of boss. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It's very, very dark, yo. Very, very dangerous. Dust to dust, the most explosive matter is the sound you can't touch. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We're very, very, very dark. We're very, 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 hey, yo. Bigger, bigger, badder, badder. Better, 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 double L, get ya. Coming down with the critical war, war. Coming down with the critical pressure. Bigger, badder, better. Base life inside, rise above HQ, burning down the place. Bigger, bigger, badder, badder. Better, 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 double L, come. Bigger, badder, better. Bass and drum, we're coming up bigger, badder, better. Listen, my selector. Oh, my beast, laying down the pressure. Yo, big up Michelle, that's right. Rise above, don't rise up. Oh, shit. Gosh. What's going on, Oma Beast? 
Yo, affirmative action's been taken. Many, many rules that we're breaking. A brand new sound that we're making. These riches here that ours for the taking. Forget about them fakers. Forget about Yo, affirmative action's been taken. Many, many rules that we're breaking. A brand new sound that we're making. These riches here that ours for the taking. Forget about the fakers, cause they be forever faking. Break the code. Write your new code inside the similar crumb. New codes and we've been killing them. Big shout to Sam Carno. Jason thought I was Sam Carno. <laughs> Jokes. Thank you very much, Rob Roy. Yo. Lose your identity like 25 million. Erase your force and forget your opinion. Break down barriers and open your mind and open your thoughts. See the truth inside. Yo, these are old lyrics. Yo. We got to sprint towards the light that will blind us. Taking plus for minus. Squeezing drops of moisture at the dryness. Tangent and cosinus. Never bow to no hindness. Marching Pom Babylon with the army, with the army. With the army behind us. Rise above soldiers, don't look over no shoulders. Shout out to God's own spirit limited. I've been the representer, presenter, presenter. Yeah. Representer, since they cut the call for my placenta. From the warm part of the womb to the coldest part of the winter, why they get enter? Better still, tell me how you enter. It's double LMC, tell me how you enter. I've been the representer since they cut the call for my placenta. From the warm part of the warm to the coldest part of the winter. The winter, the winter. Listen, Oma beats my selector. Finger on the fader. Yo, finger dab on the fader. My head out of the mixer. Time to give them flavor. Time to make some paper. from someone. I think we'll save that one for the uh, customer services. Still beneath the surface, we saw beneath the surface. Wow, we stopped the war on purpose. The battleground be dirty, but the double LP dirtless. The weapon every way and heavy flowing into surplus. Time to make it boom again. I don't think you heard us. We're engineering new dimensions using psychotropic substance. Listen. Engineering new dimensions using psychotropic substance. Why? The spirit molecule exists in great abundance. Harness energy from the infinity around us then. Look inside to reveal a hidden purpose. We got just under 500 people tuned in. It's Friday night, live inside the crater, inside the holosphere. Big shout out to all the Archaics crew, I see you. Apparently someone on the email... <laughs> Leave it to a customer we'll service. Service. Customer this, service. We're, we're not going to ignore this. I'm speaking to the person who sent the email, and he's we always he's still in the email place. that we're going to ignore this. We're not. We're going to address it. We'll address it. Customer services. Oh, my beats laying down the pressure. Let the ego flow. <laughs> Weaponized ego. That's how I keep a strong triad. Keep that parasite force away now. Without the ego, you are powerless to get the parasite. 3,300 trolls tonight, Auntie Kovia. Dare we put the chat on the screen? I'll tell you what, we aren't any sex bots tonight. Junior, 
Andy's just dealing with some complaints in our uh, temporary customer services department over here. Hope you're enjoying your breakfast, Stuart G. Here's some, here's some toasted rabbit. Young Goodman Brand, thank you very much. I hope you subscribe, give it a little share. We do this every week and we have loads of different guests, loads of different topics. We've got the sickest t-shirts and hoodies in the game as well, don't forget. Right now you're in tune to the sound at Oma Beats. My name is Double L and C, that's Andy PG. We are the Rise Above team. Gosh. Big shout to Mad Prism, I see ya. Unleash! Spark up the flame, pass me the light. Somebody better tell me, tell me. Spark up the flame, pass me the light. Somebody better tell me who be blazing tonight. Oh, my beats is on the decks and MC double L's on mic, mic, mic. Listen. We are increasing the vibration inside the simulacrum. The all-seeing eye can't see the change in this vibration. Breaking through the surface. Rah. Yo, Gnostic Baseball, I see ya. Thank you for tuning in. This is RiseAbove.tv. we go again. New tunes, no flow. Time to let them know again. Welcome to my lecture. Take precaution as you enter. You bit into the apple with the razor in the centre. Big shout to Rachel McCaskill, I see ya. As I sit my organic, bespoke artisan cola. Compression, maximum compression. Hey yo yo, rise above crew. I see you. Oh uh, come on, Green Diesel, you gotta respect Grandmaster Ginny, yeah. Yeah, the best tracksuits in the game, fam. took Mark's advice. Ghost with the live meme. Let's see it. Oh wow. <laughs> Still there. This 
Listen, our tracksuits don't actually look like this. Our tracksuits are much better. Master Ginny would have been proud to wear one of the Rise Above tracksuits, trust me. If you're new to Rise Above, you'll get to know our humour, don't worry. Master Ginny is an ironic idol. Holy shit, Omer Beats. That's an errant mix right there. Yo, what's going on? What's happening? That boom boom is back again. The Phoenix is back again. Yeah, we return like the Phoenix. 138 year remix. Whoa. Holy shit, Omer Beats. The Demiurge knows about this. AIX cannot simulate this. in the mix. Stop you running around, making problems the town. Why are you showing ah, pictures to me, Sam? No, these people think we don't do <laughs> A message to you, Rudy. A message to you. on your seatbelts. Holy shit. Homer beats his live in session. Allow me to illustrate. Let's see the studio properly, everyone. Okay, we're going deeper. Rip a new hole in that similosphere. Open up the portal. Step through, become immortal. I straight forward, yo. I straight forward like a predator. Tunnel vision, only focus on what's dead ahead of ya. Don't go to your peripheral. I straight forward like a predator. Tunnel vision, focus, what's dead ahead of ya. Don't look to peripheral vision. Why? Why? That's just the human condition. But we're the shapeshifters, transdimensional entities manipulate our destiny. We got the remedy. Raise up your frequency. Open your heart, cause fear is the enemy, the enemy, the enemy. We've got 440 people tuned in to the rise of our frequency. Holy shit. Wizards and warlocks and witches and shamans mixing plants in the kitchens. Yo, summon forth the power of raw, 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 raw. Okay, boom selector. Oh my beast, double L skin. Yo, yo, I'm that. 
side up, rhythm a ride up, bust a bust a bust a one liner. Be in the game, so I'm a no timer. Let me go flow with tight like vagina. I'm a rhymer, I'm a creeper. Break the surface, I'm a little deeper. Super follower, I'm a little leader. Super stronger, I'm a little weaker. Yo, we pop that speaker, that Al Qaeda. We're blowing up, yo, we're blowing up the speaker. Some a little follower, some a little leader. Some a little stronger, some a little weaker. Oh, my beats and double LMC, we pop the speaker. Holy shit. Warming up the techniques, warming up my tongue. A vibe is coming on, I said warming up by the techniques, Whoops, warming up by my tongue, yo, warming up by the techniques, warming up by my tongue, bad boy sound of Bowman beats and double L, the style is coming on, on, yo it's rise above, how's everyone feeling on this Friday night, or a Saturday morning, depending where you are, I can see you lot in the comments. <laughs> This week is not an official pirate radio show, but after that amazing rabbit that Jason served up, we are going to play for another 20 minutes or so until 1 a.m. GMT. Tone space, I'd love to do it, but unfortunately, you can't. MC over a live link. You have to be live in the studio. It doesn't work on the restream. The next break, Omar. It's unpredictable. Remain unpredictable. B A I X, unpredictable. The way I bust these lyrical messages. Throughout your avenues and terraces If you went down with me, I'll be your nemesis I shake your brain inside your skull until you need a therapist Yo, it's time to meet the specialist On the beats and double L, we're deadly in the premises We sp- never miss When we sp- never miss Big up Pollyanna, I see ya Big up Donna Harper, Andy Pandy 33 Lord Dobesworth Kunzi P, I see ya Yo, welcome to my lecture, take precaution as you enter, as you bite into the apple, with a razor dab and a sender, my defender. Lead pretender looking for the denture, the time to bite the underdog with number one contender. Rolling through the entrance, checking every word of the sentence. Pensions for dimensions, in my lyrical extension called confession. Scared with them with a styling kick progression. No matter what your creature your colour or your skin complexion, rip the session. LSI, L skin injection, live inside the rise above HQ, so people what you reckon. Yeah, we, we, we came across the final boss tonight and we survived. We can go down the rabbit hole another day. But Tone Space, if you want to send us some of your music, riseaboveartists at gmail.com. From the false validation I look away from our own reflection We're headed in the wrong direction Anything for our attention Why are we showing this Kanye thing again? <laughs> it is cool though, it's such a good, it's such a good thing That is that is well good, that symbol is amazing We don't want to be seen as Kanye sympathizers right here <laughs> Anything for our attention. Uh, Who's got Trump in these entertaining? Very entertaining. I mean, what character to come out and say you love Hitler? Like, you like Hitler? I said Hitler was a good person, mate. Right? Anything for our Fake lives, fake 
imperfections come Life through a lens and view through a filter That the clouds aren't lined with silver Hanging on to every like and follower Our self-worth couldn't get much hollower So step away from the false validation And look away from our own reflection We're headed in the wrong direction Anything for our attention Anything for our attention We got seven extra people, 447. Is that divisible by 138? Somebody get out a calculator. Right about now, this is Rise Above Live from the HQ. If you haven't subscribed, please do. We're passing through, through. Remember, when we plant seeds under harvest moons, we look forth to the Ekra Nox. Nox, Nox. The Ekra Nox, Nox. That's when seeds bloom. Work. It means everything to us. Big up to the 33 crew. Armageddon acolytes. Assimilate the function. Function, function. Nothing less than savage, savage, savage. Thank you very much for that equation there, God's own spirit. The amount of people tuned in was divisible to 33, perfect, love it. A big shout out to everyone that's on this journey with us as we traverse the simulacrum, simulacrum, the simulation. Broadcasting north, east, south, and west. Out to anyone that can take this vibration. Rise above. Goodman Brown, Stuart G, 
Eye for an eye, DJ Don Shady. Tristan Young, I see ya. This DJ's own my beats, this is our resident DJ. Along with Magix, who's sadly not here tonight. Also, we're missing our metaphysical expert, Master Lee. He is right now conducting psionic remote viewing with an international group. He will be back in a few weeks to tell us all about it. We get serious here at Rise Above, we're not mucking about. We do what we say, we say what we do, rise above. Exactly, fam. I feel powerful right now. I'm sat in the HQ and I'm broadcasting to all of you. Errands, sentient souls everywhere. We are rising above the negative energy. Above the dungeon programming. Yandy Paddy, Master Lee will be back in a couple of weeks with many stories to tell. See you there, Randy PG. I speak to Master Lee every day. Jason knows how to rise above. I've been preparing some very special new lyrics for you guys as well. I've been writing and downloading heavily in the last couple of weeks. Big shout Rob Roy. You ain't seen nothing yet. I ain't, none of my lyrics have been on tonight, trust me. When Oma puts the 140 beat on, the closest BPM to 138 is when I can start to channel. Pick up time space. Yes, Stuart G, Master Lee is conducting remote viewing with a group in, I think, Russia and America. Psionics. I see you. Big shout out to everyone in Santiago, Chile. Big shout out to Santiago, Chile. Holy shit, it's on my beat. Live in the studio, live in the streets. Once for the A's, two's for the spades. This is how a drum and bass session gets played. Once for the A's, two's for the spades. Listen, this is how a drum and <laughs> this is how a drum and bass session gets played. Blaze, oh my beats, man. Big shout out to Adam Cook. Remember here on Rise Above, we comment on the news, we have guests, we also do call-ins and we do pirate radio sessions where it's all about the music. Tonight is a bit of a mix of all, but that's calling. Jack's eye for an eye. Technique is legendary. Live empty, dead and bury. Wow, done it at the cemetery. Well, I'm still live and merry. One, three, eight, eight.
Oh my god, we got some memes. Check this out. Remember my comment earlier on about squeezing the toothpaste out of the jar and it never comes back in? <laughs> Auntie Kobe gets strikes again. <laughs> Yeah, they've still got record amount of people tuned in, 428. Is that divisible? Can double L get any more lyrical? Once for the A's, yo, two's for the space. This is how a drum and bass session gets played. Unpredictable, yo. Should we speed up the bars a little bit? Okay. Yo, 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 double checking the measurement, write down shit on testament, lace for those whole relevance, on my lyrical intelligence, some new stage of new developments, in this everlasting race, identify that thick elements, it's name of the drum and the bass, so check the pace, the tempo, never heard before, the flagship of my baby culture busting up the floor once more, from this day until the end of time, oh my beat, spin the rhythm, double L, we're speaking rhyme, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, dust, yo,
dirty, filthy and disgusting. Your own beats is busting, busting, busting. 400 people tuned in. for a re-education, a re-assimilation. <laughs> Oma Beats in session. Double L's laying down the impressions. Watch as we attack this, swarming like arachnids. Every single move premeditated, never tag this. Soldiers out there, know that you still back this. I know that you still back this.
wave it through the place. Last how I like it, wicked style for them. Hey, stop no gang, your time. Live the crew right there, yeah, yeah, yeah. They try shut down the clubs, they try shut down the raves, but they can't shut down the vibes, the vibes are running all day. They try lock down the ting, get everybody praying in, but you can't stop the people moving, going back to the rave.
Big shout to you, Benny Riley. Welcome to the party. Archaics absolutely smashed it on this channel earlier on. Homer's in the house. The sound of Homer beats double LMC. This is the Rise Above Posse. Big shout out to all our new viewers and listeners. Make sure you subscribe. We broadcast every Friday night at 9 p.m. Next week, we've got Seek 101. He's talking about his faith and his experiences in the Freemasons. Next Friday. Jason goes live again. You're welcome to chill with us, Benny. Big shout to Auntie Covia. I have been trying to end the stream, but I almost got to find a special beat apparently. Four hours is the new six hours. Thank you very much, young Goodman Brown. Yeah. Still got it. I'm a beat, still got it. The unstoppable force comes up against the immovable object. Oma beats the double LMC. Co-creating what you see. Co-creating what you hear. Oma beats the double L with crystal clear. Chat Paul Bunyan, all the way in Chile, Santiago. Please join us in the future. If this is your first time of Rise Above tonight, do not forget to subscribe. We've also got another channel where we put out all the shorter recorded content. A lot of it you don't see on this channel. The link is in the description. Can't stress it enough, you've just entered a whole new level of the simulacrum. We are all errands here, rise above is creating new pathways. Come with us. Big shout to Kirsty C, Paul Fleming, 
Make sure you subscribe to our other channel. It's just called Rise Above. <laughs> Welcome to the Ramadan. or surrounding countries, we also do real life events. The last one was called Raw Treat, and there's another one coming up in 2023. Look forward to the Ekra Nos. 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 attempt to imitate it. The best in the crater could not replicate. That's right, we co-create. Big up Shiva Shampoo. guests and the best chat and the best show. We have the best memes, the best DJs, the best MCs, the best everything, everything exempt. No one can test our memes, comrades. Big up Auntie C. Big up Rise and Shine, Future Ghost. This is how you support Rise Above. This is how you keep us going. This is how we become the best looking and best sounding thing on YouTube. When you purchase merchandise, all proceeds go directly back into this stream. Aguila del Monte. Welcome to the weekend. Big up CC Garland, big up Dina Triple Seven. Aguila del
Thank you very much for your subscription, CC Garland. Welcome to the Ramali. Each and every Friday night, 9 p.m. Is this the last one, Omar? Is this the last one? Oh, we don't really like Jimmy Savile, we're only joking. Support us, buy some merchandise, www.riseabove.tv. Faith Johnson, thank you very much. We salute you. Welcome to the Ramali. The Ra family rise above. R to the A. R to the I to the S to the E. Yeah. A to the B to the O to the B to the E. R to the I to the S to the E. A to the B to the O to the B to the E. Rise above family, the Ramali. Inner Guardians will be back in a couple of weeks, I promise doing very important work out in the realm. Big up Enoch Hayes, Truth Music, Humble Disciples. Disciples to the truth and what the truth can bring. A beggar on the street with the knowledge of the king. Yo, yo. The light that will blind us, taking plus to minus. Squeezing jobs and moisture at the dryness. Tangent down cold sinus, never bowing to no highness. Marching Palm Babylon with the army behind us. The Ramali. Big up Peter I see ya. Last one from Oma Beats and myself. Oh, me and Master Lee are doing a midweek chat on Wednesday night. I forgot about that. Tune in Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Myself and Inner Guardians. There you go. <laughs> you like that one. Master Lee is watching remotely. Just making sure everybody's okay. Don't forget, tracksuit bottoms are out this week. And a whole new range of raw parallel too. live on Wednesday as well. Naughty, naughty. family. We'll see you on Wednesday night. Maybe we'll do the midweek chat slightly later on Wednesday 9.30 or 10 so Sheep Farm can finish off. I'll have a word with Dom. I don't want to overlap with Sheep Farm, I'll speak to Don. Oh, wait a minute. I'm speaking to Mark Devlin and Dom on the 15th as well. What day's that? Oh, that's Thursday, okay. But that's recorded. Doing a roundup of the year with Mark Devlin and Sheep Farm on Thursday next week.
Right, come on, Omar. I swear that's the last one. So this is the last one, is it? As you'll get to know everyone, this is how Omer Beats rolls. This is the last one, everybody. Big shout out to Toby Phillips. Young Goodman Brian, peace out brother, thank you for joining us. We hope you come back. Please subscribe. Show it to your mates. This is how we do the errant thing in the UK. Say hello to Omer Beats. Hello, hello, hello people. Any time. Another one? No. Every so there's not much target. point in me turning it down there if he's doing the that. Knows where his will hit. Were there some trolls earlier, everyone? I didn't, I, I didn't really see. Were there trolls? Apparently there were some trolls. I was too blown away by Jason, what Jason was saying. I didn't notice any trolls. I was looking for Gonzo's transmission. That's what I wanted to play, but I can't find it. Damn. Shout out to LFX. I for an eye, Lord Dupes. Pollyanna. Don't forget, the Rapparel is coming soon. Whole new range of tracksuits coming soon, probably next week. They're being designed as we speak. They will look slightly like these tracks you hear sported by Master Ginny, but they'll be much better. Big up Dude's work. I will fade it out. It's 1.33. See you guys later. See you guys on Wednesday night. Rise above. <laughs>